welcome to Gotham City tonight, or as some people are now calling it, Genosha City tonight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if we can even call it that anymore. Uh, <laughs> New oh, Genosha no. City tonight. Yeah, it might end up having to be that. But uh, well, welcome, everyone. Uh, packed week of not even just like trailer, insane episode. Alice might be leaving before we talk about the episode, but we're not going to shame her on the air for not seeing it. They're kicking it. me out. They're kicking They're... me out. <laughs> on well, the air, We don't want to ruin it for you. This is very it's true. Important. It's true. It's very I don't important. want to be spoiled. But Alice, welcome back. Uh, Hi. It's great having you back on the show. Alex, you are here too today, uh, but as always, which is great. And then Kevin's back <laughs> as well after his, ha- first off, happy birthday. Hey, thank you. Right. Yeah, happy birthday. Big, big milestone. So and you just finished uh, and you did your first toy convention. Just finished it up on Sunday. And, um, you know, happy to say it's done. And I think for the most part, people are are happy. And, um, you know, got some toys, got to meet the the guests. The guests are happy. I'm happy. Um, and it was just a, a thin, thinly veiled, disguised party for me to hang out with my friends. But, <laughs> Planning a toy show and having everyone there, suckers. But it, you that's fun. Bring you a present. Like, yeah, someone, some, some, someone did. I think I might have misplaced it. I'm, a, I'm a bad. Pr- it was really busy. It was really busy, and uh, but I got some cool stuff. And uh, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of cool prizes too. Um, gave away like a Carson Tava helmet, uh, from Hasbro. They had a lot of prizes. Um, McFarland was there. They gave away some prizes. So, like a real, um, trying to build a real toy convention feel for everybody and and um you know trying to gonna try and do it every year and make it a make it a destination kind of something to come out to come out and see for people yeah no it looked awesome uh, i had friends that went my boys the twins yes i i didn't recognize them at first because they weren't in outrageous costumes they were just <laughs> in regular clothes so then i'm like one of them won a prize and then of course <laughs> And then, like, they were standing together after. I go, ah, of course. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, on their own. I, I yeah, they, I they said it, they, they, they really enjoyed it, too. Oh, did they? Awesome. Yeah, they said they had a really good time. So I was just like, well, that's enough for me. Because uh, that means every, if they say they enjoyed it, then I take it as everyone enjoyed it. And it was a great convention. And I can see it as something that's just going to grow. And you're just going to be busier. <laughs> I hope so. But where were you, Ryan? I was here on the opposite coast. <laughs> <laughs> what were you what were you doing? Um, I'm trying to avoid it. Yeah. <laughs> what was I doing? I was uh I was at my side chick uh toy show, <laughs> as Alice calls it. So I was here at, at this one, and then it was also WrestleMania weekend. So then I would do like go to the show, then come back home, make myself some like pizza. By make, I mean order, and then uh, <laughs> and then watch some wrestling. It was great. I had a great weekend. I it's like, but it was, but it was awesome seeing all the photos and stuff because it really did look like everyone was having a good time. Yeah. Uh, but before we get into the Joker two trailer, we're gonna start off with that, and then we're gonna get into Remember It, uh, the latest X Men episode. Let's say a quick hello to the chat we got christopher negri here we've got stanley eberhard dorlaxian <sighs> the ryan doll fan club thank you for being here it's a pleasure as always uh michael taylor right it's like they were still caught me off guard as well even though it was like we talked about it like we knew it was coming and then it was like oh, oh it came uh <laughs> deadheads is here uh the ginger jedi gay andrews gaty's toys also check out his youtube channel now as well doing a lot of reviews and yes not okay still not okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh Derek hoover he's here hanging out with us tonight tony Tapony, rabbit mcgavin uh dorlaxian i already say dorlaxian if not you get another one because why the heck not chad stewart is here uh matt bush my favorite dude he's here thank you uh steven lawrence uh charlie squared uh do, 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 do. we've got Robert gavin all right zach is here hard i mean hard in why not both why not both uh cougar mcgillicuddy thank you for hanging out unlimited power let's not be creepy tonight please skylar davis uh manic mike 
is here are the deadheads shiny plastic people yes no one's okay no one is okay right so it's fine and benjamin rue thank you all for being oh and tony johnson right above him all right thank you everyone for being here thank you for coming out to hang out uh alice let's talk about joker 2 this was the way i was able to be like you gotta come on this is yeah your episode more or less because as the resident joker specifically the film fan but also the comics fan i was very excited for this trailer right me same same i think this is awesome the uh it dropped when it dropped last night like at 6 p.m pacific yeah they did like a that. whole they did a small teaser of like him just laughing in prison <laughs> at the oh, beginning of the day being like trailer tonight and i was like I prefer that kind of thing before a trailer as opposed to the current thing of like the trailer starts now. <laughs> I, I would when did that start? Who started that? Who started that? Fire them. Why do we need a teaser, <laughs> the... like a pre-roll to the trailer we're currently yeah. watching? Like we know why we clicked on it. Like it's for I'm when so... you're scrolling <laughs> and you just need to see two seconds of a thing. Oh, then trim yeah. it for YouTube. Then trim it for YouTube. We don't need it for <laughs> Uh anyway, I digest. We're not here to complain about current marketing in film. Uh yeah, so this is probably one of the most anticipated movies of the year, I would say, especially amongst this group. Maybe not Kevin, but I think for the three of us. Uh the single meow, but yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> not wrong. Right? For what's coming out in fall, I don't know. I'm pretty excited. Uh October is gonna be a pretty awesome well. October is going to be awesome for Alice and I because we're going to Hans Zimmer in October. We get this in October. It's Halloween oh, wow. in October. The fight for the tickets was crazy. <laughs> I lost a couple years of my life, but we got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I am excited for that concert. I am so freaking stoked. Uh, but yeah, so now we, we're getting this. It's definitely, this feels like a musical uh, right off the bat. But Alice, uh, your thoughts, just your initial thoughts on this trailer. I, to be honest, I had some mixed initial reactions. Um, you know, and maybe it'll be, I'll, I'll have a clear reaction once a couple extra trailers drop. I like the fact that they kind of cordon off the musical to like this fake imaginary world because I did have initially some like doubts about how they were going to incorporate a full musical into the whole film. It was like, you know... He could burst out into a song, but it would also be a little bit weird. Um, so I like that. Uh, I think if I was looking at this film as a standalone, not as a Joker film, but just as a film film, I really love the way it looks. I love the contrast between like the, you know, Gotham kind of like very grungy and then like the fully clean neon lights, very La La Land aesthetic of the, of the musical part. Um, but honestly, I was like, is this Joker? I was a little bit like mixed, <laughs> mixed feelings. I was like, are we, have we started to stray too far? Could maybe like, I, cause I was thinking too, like, is this Joker? Like, if we <laughs> don't know. Well, or be is, this, is this all Harley? Is this like, cause the last time we were all in Joker's head, are we now yeah. in Harley Quinn's head throughout this whole movie? Is this, how she sees him and her. Which could make sense. Yeah. Like, she could still be an inmate at Arkham as well. But she romanticizes about him the way he romanticizes about himself. Yes. Right. And I was thinking, because I was on the same, same boat as you on this, where I was like, I thought it was going to be a Joker film right off the bat too. And then by the time the trailer was done, I was also starting to question whose movie is this? Because there's a lot of stuff to me. Like this scene, for instance, is one of those like ones that ga gave it away where it's her. He's watching whatever's happening on stage. She touches his thigh and kind of leans over and says, we should leave. Yeah. And look at the lighting. She's lit more than anyone else in that scene. Like she's the focus here, you mm. know? It almost okay. seems like it's like uh, in the last movie where she's like, he's like imagining her. But maybe <laughs> she's imagining him. Yeah. Maybe she, yeah. You know, I don't know. Right? 
That's a, <laughs> I don't know. That's what this is, is. Speculation is fun. It is interesting that she's a patient, like the you know a, f- a full on. Or I mean, it seems to be that she's a fellow patient. There, it's not the the doctor. Uh, she's not yeah. a doctor in at Arkham, uh, at least from what the trailer shows. But she is, is that... wearing stuff that's different. She could still be a doctor. Well, yeah, I mean, po- yeah, possibly. That that's a good point. I I, I had that. F- thought initially it's like oh you know she's she could be like when she's singing with the but but i don't know there's something that communicates fellow patient to me yeah wasn't her. there a scene where they walk by and then she kind of sees him out of the doorway oh, that's right at the start in the yeah. group with everybody yeah, yeah. that's, that's I wasn't sure I mean. if she was like a volunteer like you know like with a bunch of like people helping or if she was like a patient like Not yeah true. it wasn't clear this still this very... gives me patient vibes <laughs> I think it's supposed to be. Imagine she's a doctor. <laughs> Imagine she's a doctor and she's doing that to the patient. She's like, look at me. It's just going to be so chaotic. Maybe but that, maybe that, that kind of makes it more interesting in a way because yeah. she could just take him and leave. There you go. Yeah. Right. Checking out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Right. Like this is, this is great too. They're using that old set. Yeah. Or at least that's what it's supposed to look like. And it's again, this could be another whole like musical fantasy sequence where they have now taken over the show that he shot up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and again, I think we I saw this. It's same here. I was like, it's very um, Batman animated series vibes, you know, it, unlike the Suicide Squad where they kind of went for like a modern twist, this is very like harken backs to the OG, the original the little eye makeup as like placeholder for like the mask. I was like that's so good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I like the, they just got the diamonds going, the red still right, the black and the red Uh I also noticed like she's clearly got fans because we've got juggalos here in the crowd <laughs> as well. <laughs> wow, that's just the Joker. Why would you t- say that about her? Yeah. <laughs> Positioning, thinking of this as a juggalo movie is a great, <laughs> is a great context. The, the right? previous ones do. It's like Rise of the Juggalos. Right. Like it's right. Matt Bush saying she's on the other side of the prison glass. She very well could. Right. And then hang on, we'll get to this as well. Shiny plastic people. I'm not sure about Harley and Joker doing the stair dance together. Again, this is why I think a lot of this feels like fantasy, but we don't know whose fantasy this is. Uh, we don't know what's ever what like and I think that's the best part about like even the first Joker movie. We didn't know what was real, what wasn't real, and we still come out questioning which parts are real and what isn't real. And yeah, it is very this is very surreal because it's like she's walking through the like crowd completely un uh like the it's like the police are holding the crowd back from her, but she's dressed like crazy. <laughs> like, you know, right. it's like what whatever's happening here is very uh mysterious. Well, in the first movie, too, he had his fans, like he had a fan mm. base, right? Like it's it. Hmm. I don't think they would like have an escaped convict that was in a ward for murdering somebody live on TV. All of a sudden, just like, oh, he's free. We'll just, he's fine. <laughs> yeah. Unless, of course, he did. But also, get... in a way, oh, like, oh, I was just going to, if this was kind of in their heads, right? Like, egotistical people, like, the world kind of revolves around them. Like, I could totally see a, a, a sequence of shots where it's like they're in their own head. They're like, I'm like the main star of the show. And like in reality, you know, maybe it's people aren't moving the same way, but for the sake of the cinematography, like representing what's going on in their head, it's like, you know, they're walking and everyone's parting, you know, out of the way for them kind of vibes. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Malignant narcissists. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of what we're dealing with in this. Like, yeah, it is. The... <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, I love this. The free again, free Joker signs. Uh, clown court graffiti. Uh, we love Joker. Knock knock. That's kind of fun. Uh, right. So these again, there's people that see them as celebrities. It says clearly has to be a number in the movie. Yeah. Mm. 
There's no background. It's, There's it's no background. Because <laughs> it looks like it's on a stage. Yeah. Uh, again, awesome. This is, I don't know. I Just seeing this, because again, we don't have the context for it. It's just, this just looks like an absolute riot. And I, I do hope they keep everything. Uh, I hope they kind of have us like still guessing throughout this movie again. And not only just guessing, but feel uncomfortable. I think that was the one of the most, this sounds like, this sounds really kind of like, ugh, like whatever. <laughs> but I actually liked feeling uncomfortable watching the Joker the entire time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, cause you're always on edge and you're not sure what's going to happen. And you're, Look at that guy know. looking through the, the window in the back there. That's certainly that's certainly some uncomfortable stuff right there. Yeah, no eyes. Just <laughs> just very and I think, um one of uh, one of the things that DC does kind of differently or more than Marvel is they have a grittier kind of style of, of storytelling, especially in the comics. And um I think it's a little less prevalent in the films because for mainstream media, you want to make it kind of acceptable. You can't, you know, they don't want too many R-rated films, that kind of thing. But having a film where it's kind of awkward, a little weird, a little kind of like, you know, not so cool superhero, I think kind of lends itself into DC's kind of storytelling. I, I like the fact that they're doing something where the main character might not be just like, I'm really cool. Because Joker sometimes com comes across as like, a very cool super villain. Um, I like the fact that he's a little awkward, you know, it's different. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm digging that too. Uh, I'm in the exact same boat again, another, another stage sequence. It's, it's funny. This could all be all the stuff that we're seeing that looks like a stage sequence could all be the same number. Cause right. if there's one thing I'm starting to mm. notice about trailers and teaser trailers, uh, is that a lot of the stuff that we get in the trailer is like the first two scenes. And maybe mm -hmm. something, one or two clips from something later on. But I do notice like when we start seeing big pictures and a lot of this too is like this movie, this trailer is two minutes of like cut, 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 cut. Like, and it's mm -hmm. great. So again, see, she's here on the other opposite side of the bars. Right? How cute. <laughs> this, this is cute. Meeting this your is, boyfriend in prison. <laughs> right? Relationship goals. That's what this is. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have this time to find someone else yeah this is my Romeo and Juliet yes <laughs> I like this I like this stage a lot yes. here's your La La Land uh, vibe yeah, yeah. That's exactly I, what I was talking about yeah. and I love that there's vacancy at a hotel <laughs> like it's just these little details and stuff all the, the water towers and stuff throughout Gotham mm -hmm. it just I don't know. This to me just looks like they said, "Hey, let's." I was sorry, if they made the sky red instead of the blue, I would have mm, been like, "Oh this is, yeah, this is Batman animated series, like a hundred percent." But they didn't. But it, this all matches with what they're doing. Like just in a because like the whole lighting is blue, and right? it kind of almost romanticizes Gotham in a way that I think Joker loves Gotham in a way that, you know, some other people don't. And so it makes sense that it's like this clean, beautiful version of Gotham. Oh, that's a good, mm. good point. Right. It's, it's, it's too scenic. It's usually, no. <laughs> usually looks more disastrous, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Aha land. Uh, from the uh -huh. dead. Oh my God. Well done. That's pretty good. Well done. <laughs> Oh, hey, Batman89, welcome back. I just stopping by to say hey. And yes, watch, catch up on the episode later because it's... Me and you, me and you. <laughs> me too, yeah. <laughs> right, this is a, another great shot of Gaga getting the makeup done. This is too, this was the, the teaser in the morning. This of... is how I felt after that latest X-Men episode. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, <laughs> that's it. Yeah, just standing there laughing in the rain and just <laughs> cry. <Or> crying. Right. <laughs> I actually even like the this now had me think of like the first line in the trailer. Like, yeah, what? No jokes today. Uh, no. from one of the guards. Yeah. It's I know it's very like on the nose and stuff. But I I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's it's so good. This is a great shot too. 
the Harley pointing mm. the gun at the Joker. Mm -hmm. Right. And this shot too. Awesome. Cause it, again, I don't know what's happening behind her. Cause there's just people working in, oh, yeah. working in the <laughs> office behind her, but it looks like she's like smearing blood across her lips to make the smile. Well, uh, any of these could be like, you know, musical number sequences, really. Like the, it's who knows what's real and what's imagined here. Yes, it's that's so cool. I See, like the more I talk about this movie, the more I actually get excited about it. This shot, too. I love mm. where it looks like, again, he's got backup singers. Those and they look like the same one from the church that we saw earlier uh, as well. Right. Oh, so I got to. I have a feeling we're going to see some reoccurring like just background. Yeah. Elements. I think we're going yeah, to see. Yeah, what if it, this is like what you said? It's like the first part of the the movie and it's just one one scene or a show. Yeah. And uh, they're just chopping it up and really really um nice and confusing almost or deceptively <laughs> for the trailer. Yeah. That's that's uh, kind of where my head's kind of been at with this, but like that it's, you know, we still don't know what's, what's coming, what's happening, how long he's been in there. And this was the last shot of the trailer. I love again, this too. shot. So, so good. <laughs> the way he forms the smile into the smile on the, on the glass. Yeah. Perfectly. I yeah. don't know if they like, is I this CGI it practically or, well, I mean like, is it, I feel like it costs so much money to do that CGI if they just took like yeah. 10 takes of him matching it up, you know? Right. It's like, okay, now you draw it on this exact same spot on the glass again, and then he's yeah. got to look off camera for someone to be like, okay, more, more. And then... directing them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's like, like, actors are the masters of that, right? Like being able to hit a mark without looking at it. Like there's just such a uh, physical awareness that, you know, yeah, mm. I'm sure they just, they just, practically did it but i love the way what i love about the shot is the way it evolves you know like gets drawn and he kind of lines it up and then when he smiles up into it right. like it's very cool <laughs> it's almost like putting on the costume for himself yeah like yeah the that he smiles into it right yeah. isn't she saying something too like i want to see you like see your real face or like mm. something along mm. those right, lines I real you or something yeah yeah and again, she's on the opposite side of the glass, which is why I, yeah. I keep thinking in my head, she's not a prisoner. Yeah. Oh, good point. Or maybe she gets, maybe she, maybe she's not like criminally insane. Maybe well, she's. That's, that's how Harley Quinn starts. Right? A woman in the, in, what, what year is this set? I don't actually know. I was just going to make a joke about being a woman in the seventies or something. But that's another great point. Mm. We actually don't it because it there's we don't see like in the first movie we don't see like cell phones yeah and, i think it's like just a vague martin scorsese uh 70s setting <laughs> I, I don't but I, I don't know if it's like a specific if they're specifically saying it's period but at least with the last one it was just sort of like you're, you're maybe not supposed to think about it right just because going from just like the just the fashions. And even when you look at just how the hospital looks, just the, the aesthetic of the move, the first movie anyways, feels very seventies. Again, I think taxi driver was something that it was compared to a lot. Yeah. Uh, just because of that dirty, gritty look to everything. And I think that's what makes it too. Like if you don't add the cell phones, if you don't put in new cars, that kind of stuff, I think that gives it that, like you can watch this at any time. Yeah. And it kind of you can kind of get away with it being like not dated. I think yeah. that's the the right yeah. term. It's amazing how it's like the moment you take out technology, it's like this can be any time. This could be today. Only <laughs> just just from the simple although, thing of like no no GPS in your car. Although it is interesting because it's like I feel like it's there. It's doing that because it specifically wants you to think about taxi driver and king of comedy and like the movies martin scorsese was making in that era. whereas like the, the like the tim burton batman movie that has this sort of like you would you wouldn't necessarily say it's the 80s it's got like kind of a 
like a art deco 40s uh vibe obviously it's like set in modern day but like mm -hmm. it has more of this like removed kind of just like romantic uh you know it, like plays to like batman's origin sort of thing like um you know i think they play around with like the time period and the setting to make you put it in the context of something else right what if the piece of glass was on wheels and then someone was moving it to line it up to his face? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Movie magic. Sorry, I'm still on that. Yeah, no, that's okay. But you know what? That possibly could very well happen. I'm sorry. <laughs> Alex, I, I heard everything you said. The 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 look of 89 Batman and all that stuff. The suits were, you know, boxy and made to look a certain way. But I, I, I'm still this shot because Ryan still has it up. It's uh, yeah. Well, you know, that's, that's how they did the floating that. pen in 2001. Like it's it was stuck to a piece of glass and they moved it around in front of the in front of the camera. So that's how they know. did a lot of CGI back in the day. They just painted <laughs> it on like the plastic and then popped it in front of the camera. Yeah, yep. uh, that's how matte painting was done for, you know, the environment mm. extent, environmental extensions and uh death star backgrounds and right all that kind yeah, of stuff this right? is kind of like a it's kind of like matte paint a matte painting uh in real time <laughs> that's it yeah that's <laughs> it's probably yeah. a different phrase for that but yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's there's a, everything in my heart wants this to be a practical shot <laughs> I, I have to assume so. Like, yeah, I bet. Uh, this was. is this is fucking Phoenix. Like, I could imagine him being like, "I want to do this like in re reality." You know, I want to do this for yeah. real. Well, even Todd Phillips, right? Like, just even the director, like, oh yeah, just how he just kind of films things. I don't think he relies a. L Obviously, every movie uses VFX uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, in a lot of ways, we don't even really realize that they're using it. Uh, so this movie is probably no exception to that. But I mean, as far as like just simple things like this, I could, there's movies that will just like, yeah, we'll just do it in post. Uh, I don't feel like this is one of those movies that are just. They may have like cleaned up the glass in post, like, uh, you know, either, or maybe it was like the first take, but like, you know, resetting that, <laughs> you know, a lipstick stain every yeah. time. Like, yeah, you'd probably see so. Or even no. just make sure reflection, like there's no reflections in the glass right like we yeah. Could, yeah yeah like we would comp out things like that like it's just you know that that all, that still takes a team <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry i really set us down this glass path yeah, yeah. <laughs> thinking, like what if gaga's on a separate take and they comped her into the front so that they could light it and then, now i'm just thinking about these things you know <laughs> yeah it's yeah you should switch it ryan that's good that's yeah yeah that's, there you go. Just a, well, like yeah, this is cg obviously like this <laughs> Oh, maybe. Whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's break this down. Let's break this down. <laughs> okay, I got a question for. Well, we'll start with Alice on this one too. Uh, do you think this is Lady Gaga's acting Oscar? Ooh. Because she's got Ooh. one for her best song. Yeah. But I, not I can her. tell there's something in my. I don't know her personally. Her and I have never talked. <laughs> really? Do, uh, yeah, it's shocking. I call her every Friday. No. Oh, yeah. Well, then you might see that I asked the right person. Uh, <laughs> do you, like, I honestly think because the first one, uh, wa Joaquin, Joaquin, like, yeah, yeah, Phoenix, he <laughs> won an Oscar for the first one. So I'm just kind of like wondering too. Like, there's potential here because again, Hollywood loves tragedy. Hollywood loves music. Uh, I feel like this could be another big potential. Like we haven't, I know we haven't seen anything. We haven't heard any dialogue, nothing. Uh, but I do feel like this is one of those things where I think she could win an Oscar. Oh yeah. Did like, she win Lady for Gaga. a star is born or. So, that was the best I, song though, right? Yeah. Best song for, mm. uh, yeah. With, with the, with the coop. Yeah. Uh, the Cooper. Yeah, they sang it I think ever since that film, people have been like, "Oh yeah, she's going for the acting, like the acting road at this moment." Um, I don't actually know. Has she released music since? She hasn't for a while, right? I don't think she's so. Just been focusing on acting. Um, <laughs> and I haven't really looked into her filmography since *A Star Is Born*. That was the big one. 
Um, I I have a feeling she's like going for this because Joaquin Phoenix is also like a. I'm pretty sure he method acted for the first Joker to an extent. What is with these Joker actors needing feeling like they need to be method actors? <laughs> it's like we really gotta be crazy. That's the only way we can sell yeah. it. Um, yeah, you reach that level of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And I, I imagine working with someone like that, you kind of have this feeling of also partially method acting or like being as into it as as an actor like Joaquin would be. Um, and and Gaga's also, she's a little bit crazy vibes, you know? I feel like she, <laughs> she seems like someone who would full 100% commit to a role like this. Mm. A good call. Yeah, because I'm even trying to think too of like, because you're right, it's been a long time she's, since she has released an album of any sort. And even when she was releasing an album, she would like, do, she's the meat dress one, is she not? Mm. Yes. <laughs> right? So, I mean, <laughs> we were not far off. One. Yeah, we're <laughs> we are absolutely not far off. This is She's uh, been method Harley Quinn for a while. Honestly, I feel that way too. I know it's it's so funny. The moment somebody portrays a character in a movie and then someone else takes the role, they always get asked, "How do you feel about so and so playing this role?" And even so, of course, Margot Robbie is getting nothing but those questions <laughs> about what do you how do you feel about Lady Gaga? And of course, like, of you know, she's like she's gonna kill it, right? As Margot Robbie, future star of Monopoly and Plato or something else. What was the other one? <laughs> it was like. The Blinky. Sims, The Sims. That's what it was. She's gonna, she's gonna be executive producer on The Sims and the Monopoly movie. Ah, wild times. Really? And, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, again, the, I, the toy cinematic universe. Yeah. What's happening here? There's Minecraft. <laughs> there's you know, like what are going be all these games? There's Minecraft. Kingdom? Yeah. There's an animated Minecraft. Uh, Jack Black signed on for it, I believe. Whoa, that All makes right. sense. You get a lot of kids in theaters. It's true. He does get a lot of kids right. in theaters. Yeah, good call. He's uh, yeah. There's that. Yeah, Monopoly, The Sims. Again with The Sims, like that could end up turning into something very meta, just like Barbie mm. did. Right. Yeah. But I hope they go weird because The Sims get weird, <laughs> and I also hope it's all in subtitles, and they're all speaking. <laughs> <similar>. <laughs> Like, that's a... <laughs> I want to be able to romance the Reaper. Like, if no one does that in the film, what's the point, you know? Oh, nice. <laughs> the Reaper in the hot tub. That's all I need. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, it's... I, I do hope they do that. And with Monopoly, it could end up being a movie about commentary of late-stage capitalism. And <laughs> Yeah, that? it's actually just a film about business and real estate. It's just called Monopoly, you know, it's branded by the game, but it's just a normal film about um, yeah. It's, a, it's dramatic. It's a... yeah, it's like Wolf it's... of Wall Street, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's rated R, a rated R yeah. Monopoly. The Wolf like... of Baltic <laughs> Avenue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're buying Broadway. We're buying Broadway, <laughs> folks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but and Monopoly Man's got to go to jail at some point. Oh yeah, that's the second know. second act. Second act. He does, he does not pass go. He does <laughs> not collect, collect two hundred. No, no, he does not collect two hundred. <laughs> right? No. So that's. I mean, that's the future of film we're looking at, folks. Uh, games. That's going to be the the next cinematic universe, I guess. Actually, hang on. Games. I know that we're like totally digressing from the, we're straying away, but did anyone see the interview lately, recently with Robert Downey Jr. Uh, totally being for coming back as Iron Man? Oh, wow. He said nope. that? Yeah, like I would come back. <laughs> I thought he said he was like, I'm done. No, he didn't want to be written off the, he didn't want to be written they they filmed two endings. I didn't realize this either. They filmed two endings to Endgame, where Steve Rogers snaps his fingers, and where Iron Man snaps his fingers. Oh, and they well, filmed wow. they filmed two different ones. 
So they because they playing... couldn't decide, or because they didn't want the actors to know, or like I think that I think I think it could have been a little bit of both on that end. Mm-hmm. I don't think they knew which way they wanted to go, and I think they also wanted to make sure nothing. If anything leaked, they could easily like swerve everybody. Does that mean there's a version where Tony Stark is like an old man on a bench, or did they, did they not go that far? I don't know if they went that far, but it was. <laughs> I know there's a lot of rumors about like him not wanting to have the character get killed off. Mm. And he kind of addresses that a little bit. Mm. And, you know, corporate Hollywood being corporate Hollywood, you take a look at how much he's making per film. Mm. I could absolutely see somebody higher up at Disney being like, we can do this without him. Yeah. We can save money. money. (laughs) It's true. This is completely... like you know not dc but the um the new kung fu panda film um people were talking about how in the trailer like the original cast is in the trailer like the you know angelina jolie uh you know it's like a star-studded cast for the first film uh, but the actual film doesn't have any of those characters in uh oh, it, they yeah. just teased it because people were saying they just simply could not afford those actors or did not want to pay for all those actors anymore because it's like lucy Liu, angelina jolie and like um Dustin like a Hoffman. fully star-studded cat yeah 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 Damn. they pulled a yeah. switcheroo so I, I could see i and you know and alice and i because we we work in the business so we this is something we even deal with in our own studio right where it's just like sometimes they don't want like they just don't want to do certain things because it costs too much or certain people cost too much. Mm. So it's just like, so they don't necessarily want to do it. And this is something I've seen across, like I've worked at multiple studios. I've seen it all across the board. Uh, So it wouldn't even shock me at all where they're like, why are we paying him $75 million when we could lose $75 million by not bringing in anybody, somebody, nobody knows. Right. Because I feel like I don't I don't know how I feel about Marvel at the moment, because I feel like they're doing some awesome stuff and some stuff that's just kind of there. So I feel like there's a, a little bit of mixture of that. But uh, mm. yeah, I, I I know this wasn't on the docket to talk about tonight. Uh, <laughs> but I am curious, like Kevin, like you're you're a big Marvel dude, too. Uh, like what how would you feel like if they were to bring him back and did it appropriately without losing the effect of him? you know, sacrificing mm-hmm. himself for the greater good. Like if they brought him back and were able to do it correctly, like how would you feel about that? Dude, I love I love him as uh, as Tony Stark, as Iron Man. So mm-hmm. any chance to get him back, I think it's perfect. Um, like for him in that role, it's just a matter of how you go about doing it. But you have all the TVA stuff, you know, all, the, all of that is just like a big safety net. Like, oh, no, I made a huge mistake. Let's go into this other timeline. Reset. But, yeah, reset. <laughs> How cool would it have been, though, if in Loki or something, they, they had that other, other universe where Steve Rogers, you know, uh, snapped the, mm. the glove, right? And just, just for fans, it, it would be a cool story to see. But for people who know that, you know, like you told us, there's, there's two different... Um, outcomes it's like oh that, that would have been a cool window or something they look into they stop in that world and this is what happened i think that'd be cool or even in a what if you know even there's, there's so if. many opportunities for that i would love i would love to see that yeah i, I would too uh, uh alex iron man um, return I, yeah i mean uh it's i mean it's been even longer since they've done like a proper iron man movie right it's like you know, he, uh, my, I haven't watched, rewatched any of the movies, but like my kind of vague recollection is that he almost, it was not, you know, he, he kind of took a back seat, you know, once the like Avengers uh, stuff really came front and center. I know he had like the emotional through line of like his family and stuff, but it was always like, you know, he wasn't, I mean, I don't know, I guess he was part of civil. It, it just was such an ensemble thing, you know, that like it felt like you were getting less and less Robert Downey Jr. with each movie, even though when he yeah. showed up, it was like, oh, it, it, he's like the Bill Murray to those like what Bill Murray did for Ghostbusters, like bringing so much himself to, to every scene and like making it come alive. I feel like Robert Downey Jr. did that for the Avengers movies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, of course, he's like, a, a, a welcome presence um but also i feel like it's 
you know, it's been a really long time since we've had like a standalone Iron Man movie that just kind of lets him be the star of the show, you know? Yeah, I would, I would totally be down for an Iron Man 4 if they decided to just do it. Even if it took like place five years before another prequel, I don't know if I'd want a prequel. Or an but, older I mean, Iron Man. Like, like, what does the Dark Knight Returns story for Iron Man look like, you know? Yeah, mm. ooh, yeah. Actually, the last know, ride. I, that's ooh, right? That's what it have to be called. Alice, let's hear it. Got, uh, let us have it. What's your take? Iron Man. Oh, yeah. I mean, Iron Man has always been one of my favorite uh, Marvel superheroes. Back before everyone was snarky, Tony Stark was snarky. And I was like, he's the, one of the OGs, you know, up there with like Spider Man. Um, I remember, yeah, I because Iron Man films, the trilogy of Iron Man films, were one of the first of that, what do they call it, generation of Marvel films? What do they call it? They have like a term for it. Yeah, the phases. Um, he was like one of the original of that cinematic universe. And so I kind of, in a way, like I, I, I love him, but also I feel like if he came back, I, I fear I would be disappointed. Oh. because they make films differently now you know the way they write films marvel films the way they kind of like shoot marvel films they have a slightly different flair now and i almost wonder if i would be disappointed if it was an iron man film in the style of the current um films mm. right you'd almost need like the russos to come back or favreau yeah yeah right yeah. actually Those a favreau are... reunion iron man reunion tour would be great yeah those are huge huge parts of uh those films being successful i think yeah i think so too they really got to go through it okay all right let's get back onto it let's get into x-men alice you are welcome to stay if you want to <laughs> if you if you no, want to no, go I, I do eventually want to watch it i just i will be chronically late perhaps I'll, I'll make an effort if now that i've gotten kicked off once i know i have to make an effort now next time <laughs> come prepared you know, yeah this is my punishment i i should have known better um i will say guys i read one episode of a comic this week so it's kind of a big deal i read i read a singular comic nice really um, <laughs> and which comic do you recommend it um it was fun it was like a it was the superman man of tomorrow the one where he's like picking up jobs of like other people um and the one where he's like takes over for Atlas, like holding the world, yeah, for like oh, a wow. day where he goes to his his daughter's wedding. I was like, that was nice. It's like, you know, <laughs> less than twenty pages, crammed out in like ten minutes. It was great. <laughs> Enjoyed it. So this is my this is my gateway, guys. I'm I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, one day I'll. <laughs> it's okay. No, that's that's perfect. That's a great that's a great start. <laughs> Thanks. No, I love it. All right. Well, again, All you're right. free to bounce at any time. And then, uh, yeah, then I just want to make sure you also get all your work done as well. So just come back whenever you're you're free and ready and not uh, got a pile of work. Yeah, <laughs> I'll go. I'll day. go watch it now, guys. I'll, I'll go do my homework now. And, and... <laughs> where, where is it streaming again? Disney Plus. Disney Plus. Okay. Okay. I know. <laughs> okay. Do that, guys. All right. Awesome. Have fun. All right. Good night, Al. <laughs> Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. Let's let's do this. X-Men 97. Hey, spoiler guys. alert. Spoilers galore. Let's, hang on. I'll put a little banner up. It's gonna say. There we go. Spoilers. Spoilers will be happening. Galore. We are going to do this. Uh this episode again. I'd like to thank Twitter for getting me some screen caps. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering good... where you're getting the screen caps from because uh, surprisingly hard to find, you know. Yeah, so I'd be and they'd be posting videos up it too, so I could like take screen caps from there as well. So it's been kind of nice. So again, this these wonderful shots are from uh, X Men updates on on Twitter. And this is kind of where the episode kicks off. Just nice, mm. happy, <laughs> Everything's Genosha, going right? Well. <laughs> Jadosha, welcome X Men. Magneto was right. The statues, the whole bit. Uh, again, this is one of those things where I feel, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, correct. This is 
yeah, this is not a drill. <laughs> this is not a drill. We're getting right into it. Is this the, the office <laughs> meme? This is not a drill. It's yeah. happening right now. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> it's happening. The uh, again, I think there's one thing. Uh, okay, Alex, Kevin, it's okay mm -hmm. if you both say no to this. Do you guys re have you guys been? Have you guys have read X Men comics? I should assume, correct? Uh, yes. Yes. Now. I've noticed one thing, and this is where X-Men kind of becomes very almost parallel to what can sometimes be an abusive relationship. <laughs> the, uh, the When you're reading an X-Men comic and when the story gets really good, you get comfortable. Like, even right. though things are happening and your characters are still in peril, you get comfortable because everybody's safe. Everyone's mm. still, you know bouncing off each other and everybody's making out and everyone's having a great time <laughs> they're swimming then, in the lake they're playing baseball playing basketball the whole bit and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they turn everything upside down and you go what the hell did i just read they, they just they dropped some hints along the way though in the episode they like, did but you just want to you just want to see the good parts right it, it's not so much that I, I let, I would say, because we, they did, they totally let us know this was coming. Yeah. Mm. Right. Well, you In could fact, kind of gave feel, us... you could feel yeah. that this show was heading for tragedy, right? Because it's like, 100%. you know, the, in the last two episodes, their last episode was like, you know, it's like, obviously the storm thing happened. That was like devastating, but it's like, yeah, this show's just getting started. Like they are mm -hmm. going to twist the knife before the season's through. <laughs> yeah, it's agreed. And I think that's, because again, I let my this is my own fault because I let my guard down, not expecting it to be this early. Because this true. is this is on me. This is not on the show by any stretch of the means. Because like I feel, and I think we talked about this too, where it's like they gave us five possible roads they could go down. Yeah. All five all five roads leave to shit. <laughs> right. So it was like every one of them had a bad ending. Yeah right like fall of the mutants we were talking about operation mm -hmm. zero tolerance we were talking mm -hmm. about e for extinction uh i even think before the show even came out we were saying like oh it's gonna be goblin queen inferno at the end but we got that early right so mm -hmm. then again that so that road closes and now we go to another one i feel like they they set up enough threads for us where it's like we know where it's going but we also don't know where it's going mm. uh and we don't know when it's happening. Oh my god, these these chat comments, all the comparisons are like the most tragic things that they're comparing it to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, we also had the uh, the news interview um in the beginning, yeah. right? The reporter oh, yeah. the reporter yeah, was... uh, on site too. Oh yeah, I will get to that. So with Trish oh. Tilby for the first time in the yes. cartoon in anything outside of the comics, I yeah. do believe. This is a uh, I didn't get a good screenshot of her. I couldn't find one. Trish Tilby is very important in the nineties comics. Mm. Uh, and they do start to play that, uh, that flirting and the potential relationship between her and beast. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang on. I think I do got a shot of this. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm glad to see her show up. Her, her hair is not like it is in the comics though. It's it, <laughs> That's should, where they, you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> i mean you know like that th this hair feels like a real uh choice uh but she kind of has like black like black kind of shoulder length hair in the comics. right and anyway. they did go with something different. <laughs> i love that they did do this and every interview scene in this again it's another side story but now things are become again Things are still kind of about Madeline Pryor's. We're going to get into that. There's so much happening in this episode. There's all, so much. <laughs> <laughs> so much happening. The uh, There's like one really, I think here it is. The This is super cute, you know, even with the blue, uh, I could still blush. <laughs> right. Got right? Like, it's... Too, like... <laughs> super this... cute. This Super news fun. thing, this is almost like an episode of Frasier where like, you know, they have this like news crew coming and it just goes horribly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even so much that it goes horribly wrong. It's the, it's, 
it just again, we'll get we'll get we'll get to that shot. And actually, do, we should let's go let's start horribly with this. right <laughs> before we even get into the Genosha stuff. Let's just talk about this interview stuff because yeah. not only does Beast get interviewed, and of course, Beast does an amazing job getting interviewed and representing mutants. And well, I feel like he set it up. Like he probably like he he probably invited Trish Tilby and like kind of arranged for this like you know news, uh, you know, just a here we are world where the friendly X-Men get to know us. <laughs> it's a PR. It's a PR. Yeah. Stunt. PR. Exactly. Yeah. Right. It's, it's a hundred percent that. And so when she gets to the point where she's, you know, even interviewing Cyclops, that's where things go to go to hell with this interview pretty right. quick. <laughs> and again, Cyclops is dealing with his own crazy amounts of shit at the moment. Um, kind of having two wives uh oh my god <laughs> like i can't I was, I was trying to think of this too like what's the best comparison and just kind of even go back to the mcu like remember like everyone gets blipped five years go by people could lose their their partners their families like hawkeye lost his whole family right people probably thought after three years they're not coming back start new mm. lives, start new families. And then all of a sudden, a couple of years later, their loved ones come back. Like that's got to be like, that's traumatic in itself. Yeah. Right. And I couldn't imagine what that would be like, what that would feel like. Cause that's insane. Yeah, that's true. That Hawkeye scene in the snap. I, I <laughs> just like this, just like this episode had me in tears too. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's crazy. It's and yeah. so for Cyclops, it'd be like, you are my wife, right? And, uh, you know, it's it's not. But here's... I couldn't here's... help but hear Borat in that one. You are my wife. My wife. <laughs> <laughs> I love... Real quick, I, I love the way things start to derail for Cyclops in this interview. Because it's it, it reminds me of, like, Richard Dreyfus in What About Bob... Uh, you know, if you remember that movie, is the, the whole thing is he's going to be interviewed about his book, and that just like completely derails it. So it's like it starts with Cyclops like talking about like, well, I was field leader of the X Men, and his like glasses yeah. are are flashing in the uh, they're, they're messing with the, with, with the with camera, the, right? Camera, and so then it cuts to like now they've like relocated, uh, and his posture has completely changed. Like before, he was like yeah. standing up, like trying to present himself as the leader as like who he thinks he is and now he's like it's already going badly for His not how he intended is completely shot yeah that glasses thing like yeah saying, I, he, he was standing proud right and then now he's in the chair he's all awkward and, and yeah. it's just like wow i'm completely like itching completely at his broken. arm yeah. yeah yeah i also love the way he uh got dressed for this uh interview it's total cyclops like <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that that's how i dress for weddings you know like that's... <laughs> do i yeah that's... Jeans. If I go to someone's wedding that's how i dress gene sure. <laughs> <Right? laughs> like that like and that yeah I, I agree like that whole scene is so and he's even talking about like i think uh andrew's gay toys here when he was saying like i'm team cyclops don't conform scott give the normies hell you know, yeah. like, because that's literally legit what he's doing. It's like, why are we doing this? Like, we shouldn't have to yeah. do this. All we want is just to live. Yeah. Right. Like, it's, and you can't, like, here's the crazy thing. It's just like Cyclops and Magneto have been like so on point this whole series. Yeah. Where I've just been like, yeah, like, let's fucking get them. Right. Like, it's, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was weird when she was like, why would you lie? I thought you wanted to show us that you were you were like us. It's like you're just saying humans don't lie. Like that was the yeah. dumbest. That was the dumbest. Like, are you a reporter? You're like, oh, we don't lie. Why would yeah. you try to be like us? And he's like, you know what? First of all, that's crazy talk. Secondly, like, I don't want. To, we're, we're different. Yeah. He, like, yeah. He gave them the you people. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. <laughs> he, he totally did. And it's like again, it can't, you can't help but to like just be on Cyclops' side about it. And yep. again, like, yeah, this well, whole thing with like, because it was like the whole like, you had a kid. Like, do you mind like have a have a tall glass of mind your own business? No, like, the room. yeah, that was some yeah. gotcha <laughs> journalism for sure. Hundred like, percent. Well, we checked the hospital records, and they say like, yeah. I mean, it's you know, it was 
they went from like a PR thing to like a little bit more of like a, you know, digging into their personal lives. And then, you know, yeah. And Cyclops realizing like, yeah, there are things that have happened to me trying to save the world that I can't explain to the average person. You just would not understand it. Like, uh, yeah, that's a, it's a great moment and a great character to have it happen too. Cause it's like, you know, Cyclops, defines himself as they are as it begins with the interview he defines himself as like well i'm the like if anyone's going to be like the spokesman for x-men it's me Mm. the leader like and he you know realizes that it's just that's just a fantasy right because even sometimes you're even if you're a leader sometimes you're not always the best spokesperson (laughs) and it's like it's just leave that shit to beast (laughs) like (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> like beast is really good like and again too i feel like storm would have reacted the same way yeah i think you know especially given what's happened to her you know oh man storm's got no time for anyone's bullshit and speaking of also not having time for anyone's bullshit uh gene also <laughs> has no time for anyone's bullshit in this episode this uh, is such classic x-men this <laughs> this scene this is so good I, I love this. And it's just like, you know, of course, Wolverine's going to skip out on the questions. Jean's going to, she, she can't. And she even says, I think I don't want to answer any questions because everything's too, yeah. too hazy. Everything's still kind of complicated with her memory. Uh, and Wolverine kind of just, well, Wolverine being Wolverine. <laughs> There's a really kind of shitty moment where she's like explaining to him like what the phoenix is and he's like yeah i was there and she's like i f- oh i forgot that you were there for that it's like poor wolverine like yeah like, like literally like looking at like an image of cyclops like it's just yeah. you know he is that's you know, well that, so he's, he's her world side. right like it's he was <laughs> like I, I tried to end it for you and to save the whole like galaxy like he tried twice in in the original uh series right during during that arc when they're uh, i think in that battle yep with, mm. um with the with the uh, imperial guard it's like yeah. oh right you were there that's cute <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know you <laughs> really like poor wolverine <laughs> it's it's yeah i he hasn't been able to win with uh with gene at all uh throughout the, <laughs> throughout 97 but that's Except a good thing here <laughs> right, well we're gonna you know i'll just i'll do that and then uh you're you are right like it's Hang on, I think I got a shot of it too. Because even even this happens right, like partway through when they're having their talk, yeah. and uh, she just goes for it, lays one on. Like, am I feeling anything? And she she still kind of was like, "Nah." <laughs> Jean's uh, secondary mutation is messing with emotions. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> is, Breaking isn't that hearts. Isn't that Psycho Man's power from Fantastic Four? <laughs> like he's <laughs> he messes with people's. Emotions. I think it is like uh, Hellion or, or no Empath. Empath member Empath? of the Hellions. That was like literally his power. <laughs> Gaslighting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, the great the greatest mutant power of them all. That's such a good mu- mutant power name. <laughs> yeah, Gaslight. <laughs> ice Man, put some ice over there. Gaslight, yeah. handle the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> everything's great, you guys. You love this, remember? Yeah. yeah. If you don't like this, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. A hundred percent. The but I, I again, this is like just I love this stuff. Any any of the stuff, I always feel bad for Wolverine because Gene just shuts him down over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. Uh. You know, and I love how he kind of like saw his shot with Gene because Scott was having kids with the other Gene, and that this Gene still was like, no, I don't got time. It's like Logan, take a hint. Well, yeah, <laughs> uh, you know, and then just to kind of keep going with there. So after that kind of happens, she go like it looks like to us that like her and Scott are are talking about it. And, so good. and again, we should have known the signs were there, yeah. and we I still fell for it. Yep, I knew yep. exactly who this was. I fell for it. like I'm gullible, all right. I'm a mark. Uh I couldn't help it. The because they're they're talking and they're trying to work through it. Uh and voila, it's well, 
but it's not Jean. It's Madeline, of course. The hair's down. Mm. We we should have known that this was yeah. Madeline, like right off the bat. Uh, and there's like a framed picture of them holding holding baby Nathan. Right. That you know probably you wouldn't you know have on the nightstand just yet. <laughs> Right. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's very, very true. There was that, so the signs were there, and I still mm. so when this happened and Gene catches them, which and this again, is such a great like the what I love about this show is that it's it, it isn't just well versed in like the original series, but it's like also all the comics too. So like this is right out of new X-Men when you know uh scott and emma frost have been sort of like carrying out an affair on the astral plane in this like psychic world and gene gray discovers that it's just like a, it's a cool twist to have it be madeline this time around yeah, yeah. and there's even that moment later where like emma frost kind of like smi smirks at it. like he's like was she like <laughs> hanging out in the astral plane like yeah watching this whole thing <laughs> hey emma knows when it's time to tag in you know what i mean like, <laughs> just, like and i felt like this too it, it, this was like another hint of like cyclops's kind of shitty ways right like for us who've who've read the comics we know that like when it comes to relationships scott's you know scott can sometimes be a real piece of shit <laughs> But they've uh, righted the ship more in the because it's like he really thought it was Jean Jean Grey. She thought she was Jean Grey. Like it's and now they're dealing with like this impossible situation with grief involved. Like, you know, it's you can definitely understand where everyone's coming from, uh, which is awesome. Yep, right. It feels much how like Jean found Scott and Emma in the comics. Mm -hmm. hundred percent. Uh I feel like again, I think we might even be leading up to that eventually I'd, who hmm. knows I'd, again emma this, frost this show, in the mix <laughs> emma frost is now officially in the mix somewhat so it's uh is it good or bad that there have there's so many um storylines to draw from that you can always you know make a small reference here and there uh do you think that that's going to work for for fans but then ultimately i don't know is it going to bite you I, in the ass or it just leaves because the, there's no so official payoff open? Yeah, or it just, you know, like further down the line. It's like, oh my God, they planted seeds for this in season one, episode five, and, you know, just kind of have the payoff later on. It's, I don't see why they couldn't do that. I mean, if as long as the show, with the other storylines that they're doing, as long as they're kind of still following through with that and one ends, they could pick up another one from one they started earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's, that's why like we have... Thing. Yeah, that's the whole reason why we have previously on X Men, mm. right? But I also yeah. like it's like, like it, it, I feel like this show is like not afraid to go in a new direction. So it's like no. it's not like I don't. They're probably not worried about like stepping on the toes of like doing the Emma Frost Cyclops relationship because it's like by the time if they do get to something like that, like they'll have some new way of doing it or showing it. You know, right not right. being too precious about like adapting these stories. I mean, in, like in this episode too, it like combines um, the mutant massacre and the E, f e is for extinction Genosha attack, like in, in an interest and other elements from like the eighties for you know, there's, there's so much like from that eighties period post X-Men 200, you know, like Magneto being courted by like the hellfire club to join them. And like, you know, mm. that that stuff is all uh, clearly referenced. This this is one of the uh, in the intro song, you know, they kind of switch up the scenes every week a little bit, yeah. add a new one. So this I noticed this one in there and, and there's a little bit of, I guess, light foreshadowing. From it's, there to I love with. this. I love this beefy apocalypse. He looks yeah. so good. <laughs> He's, I can see like this as one of those time. Mondo vinyls, like the Juggernaut. Do you remember that one when Mondo released that <laughs> Juggernaut? I could, I could see this a lot like this. I, there's only someone I'd... I could pitch to. <laughs> <laughs> or even one six scale. I mean, just yeah. a huge like. So cable one six. He's that he'd be like you know twelve and a half inches. So think of how big this apocalypse would be in proper one six scale. 
Like two the feet. Like a, the Haslab Sentinel. Like, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't. It's, I, you know, I don't know. I, I always say I wouldn't mind that as a Haslab. I say that about everything, though. I'm a. <laughs> I, I just love Haslabs. No, but this was some great foreshadowing. Yeah. Again, because they do that now in every episode. And I just get excited for these little clips every week now, too, just to see, like, oh, what are they going to, like, reanimate to just kind of, like, make it cool? Make Well, it was cool before, but, I mean, like, this is so much. This is so stupid. Yeah, just to call it back. Yeah. It's just, I think we took the theme song for granted. Like, I still don't skip it. But I got yeah, used to just yeah. listening to it in the background when I'm watching animated series. But now you can't even look away because uh, you, you don't know what, what what's going to be next up uh, on the new episode. It's a nice treat to get once a week. You know, like it does. It takes you back to the to when we had to wait for Saturday morning for the new episode. You can just like binge it, you know. So this yeah. has that like that. Uh, it's like, oh, the theme song. It's my time to listen to the theme song this week. That's fun. <laughs> right. It's a, I'm actually surprised Disney Disney Plus allows you to skip the intro. <laughs> yeah, that skip intro button there. Yeah, yeah whoever's right. doing that. If you're in this chat, just let us know. And we'll shame you. I'll boo you. <laughs> we, will, we will publicly boo you. Uh, <laughs> uh, right. And then like then this was the this was the main story. I feel like this is the one that wrecked us all. Uh, it's the Hellfire Gala over at Genosha. Mm. Uh, even with the stuff that was happening within Genosha, actually, we should probably go a little earlier into. Yeah, I mean, are we skipping over like Glob Herman and uh, the e Exodus Pixie. and Multiple Man dancing with Dazzler? <laughs> or is even anyone else like happy to see Nightcrawler show up and he just bamfed right onto Gambit and they were all. Yeah. Like even yeah. this in the opening, <laughs> yeah. back to back. <laughs> fighting yeah. so good that's this right the, like this is the kind of shit that i dreamed about seeing like as a kid because i was such a big yeah. nightcrawler fan and because yeah. nightcrawler was in excalibur at the time there wasn't a lot of like nightcrawler or the 90s x-men kind of showing up and teaming up so to see this was like an absolute delight uh, they crushed but, Nightcrawler in this episode. He's so good. Just his all his is, movements, the way his teleportation works, his his personality. Yeah, right. Like he's so mm -hmm. melancholy and depressed. Right in the in the actual in the original series, and I was like, to me, this is a Nightcrawler. That's a swashbuckler. Mm, he like yeah. pirate. He's a movies. romantic. He's a rom right. <laughs> and it, you get a sign of that too, right? Like with him, like with this, you know what I mean? Like where they're kind of, he's like, oh, so you seem like <laughs> you're, <laughs> where he's kind of teasing Gambit. Like everyone sees, Ga like sees right through Gambit's emotions. Yeah. They even and kind of do that, like that priest thing of like, you know, he's, he, Nightcrawler is a character who like can, who will listen and, you know, invite people to confide, you know, that, it's he's so good yeah like he's a, well he's that he's that guy for the friend you can talk to about shit yeah he's there he'll be he'll be there to listen right this is look at that oh my god that's the coolest picture it's, <laughs> that looks like that looks like some sort of anime fan art where you're just like drawing all the serious <laughs> characters in the in a buddy buddy situation <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's so awesome like how can you you just want to smile you just smile when you look at the, at this at the screenshot man it, yeah. it agreed because again these are three of my favorite characters if they just put kitty pride in there i would probably just burst into tears of just joy uh i feel that. like no one's acknowledging that it smells horrendous when nightcrawler teleports so like maybe <laughs> right. he just got that under control because he's bamfing a lot in these scenes is, and no one's like yeah. oh so can you please walk it's it smells awful in here. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's two God steps. Awful. It's just, it's yeah. Come on, don't be lazy. Yeah, <laughs> you're just showing off. Like even this shot too. Like the 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 fun relationship that Gambit and Nightcrawler have. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just it brought me so much joy, and I think it's because of this. And this probably this is probably the reason why we all let our guards down this week. I think this was all pre-planned. They knew exactly what they were doing, which is what, again, this is what makes this show so, so fun and so special. Uh, 
is that we do kind of like we know what's happening, but it makes us forget that we know what's going to happen. Yeah. Just think about how like the color palette shifts over the course of this episode. Like it's so bright and fun and colorful in the beginning. And then it's just like red (laughs) by the end. Right. Agreed. Great. Great to see Dazzler finally in the mix. Right. Controversial red hair. Controversial red hair. We'll we'll allow it. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. (laughs) Right. Like this was again super fun. The I didn't get enough shots of the dance sequence with the with multiple man. Yeah, oh uh, Glob was in there. Uh, Pixie, Exodus, Exodus, Leech. Um, <laughs> it was like a it was a who's who, really. Like <laughs> multiple man dance sequence was like completely unexpected. But yeah. It's so cool. <laughs> like visually, it's just awesome. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's super it's again this whole scene like of them going through genosha and uh i even like how gamut's like well those apples are pretty expensive huh <laughs> like, yeah. what could a banana possibly cost like ten dollars ten dollars because the apples were ten dollars i don't know if anyone noticed that and i yeah, was wondering maybe. if that was a joke for or just a callback from uh arrested development <laughs> like you've never I was, been in a grocery store have you yeah you know. <laughs> He's like, well, maybe no one's asking the question, right? He's, <laughs> he's so it was, yeah. yeah. Again, there's that that Nightcrawler figure. I, dude, I think he's already now he's becoming hard to find. Oh, really? Wolverine is hard to find. Madeline Pryor is hard to find. Uh, people were <laughs> people were selling X Men ninety seven Legends the cheapest price at the toy show. These dirty scalpers. The cheapest price was fifty dollars a pop. Whoa! And people were still asking them, "Do you have Wolverine?" Like people were already <laughs> willing to pay like the, paid that. pay that for like Wolverine and Madeline Pryor. Like, and I was like, "God, guys, you're part of the problem." I certainly don't see them doing another Wolverine at some point. If they do, I hope they also do the this Logan in the jacket. Yeah, and if I would. I would a hundred percent pay for you know how like uh classified gets G.I. Joe classified gets vehicles. Mm, if Legends Logan. decided we're gonna do our first vehicle, it's Wolverine's Jeep, <laughs> and it comes with like a pregnant gene that you can drive to the hospital. Yeah. With a destroyed uh yeah, roof. With a just, you could tear the roof off. Roof, yeah. Yep. I would just be like that's, that's a uh, that's a reference to I made Cyclops a convertible, uh right. <laughs> it, oh, I never even thought of that. Good call. Right? Good callback, right? Speaking again. of which, though, Wolverine left behind again. Again. Yeah. But, so it makes me wonder, too, is he, like, well, what is it? It's next episodes are Life Debt Part 2 and 3, mm-hmm. so they're leaving us at this cliffhanger. Right. 100%. Well, I think there, there's an, yeah, there's an episode, one episode called Bright Eyes, and then Life Death Part 2, and then it's the, like, three-part fin- finale. Oh my god! <laughs> but I feel talent. like there's, I feel like there's more cable stuff. Uh, Bright eyes. <laughs> god, I mean that kind of sounds. I mean, Could I know they Cyclops. call him he's Day Spring, but I don't know. Man, there's something kind of cable-y sounding about that. Maybe, maybe not. She she mentions his eyes. I think when he mm. shows up in this episode. They, yeah. Well, because she a they talk times. about his eyes earlier in the thing too. Like I just remember his. Yeah. His, how cute is this? kidding me oh the yeah. wave yeah <laughs> wave with the wink and yeah. then there's boom boom the cider yeah. oh is it i know That's, yeah the, the ponytail here or yeah the nice. short blonde hair yeah the suspenders i was like True. boom boom sweet <laughs> <laughs> amazing right and then there's <laughs> this is again this is ugh, such a such a fun episode Mm. Or at least the beginning is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just a grand old time. Just a grand old time. Fine. You didn't right? finish the episode, did you? I did. I'm <laughs> sorry. I've gotten so caught up in this because this is just so, so good. And here's where we get like our, our, like our mutant Illuminati. This is and this to me felt very Krakoa era. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Where they had the houses, like you had the hellfire, how you had Moria McTarget as a human representative 
Moy- Moira McTarget. Mo- right? Moira- is that Mora? McT- Mora? McTaggart. McTaggart. Thank you. <laughs> I knew I was going to. And then we, and of course, she's sitting there with Banshee. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. And Madeline Pryor is part of that. And who am I missing? Someone? It's Sebastian Shaw. Sebastian Shaw, right? Yeah. He's part of the Hellfire. And Emma Frost, yeah. And Emma yeah. Frost, right? So they're part of the Hellfire. Yeah, and it was like, it's like, it, it's like the council, the Krakoan council, uh, but also it, it it does remind me of that like 80s storyline where Magneto, as leader of the X-Men, is invited to become like the white king of the Hellfire Club. Um, right. And it's sort of this like, you know, it, he has a similar sort of like, well, you know, maybe it would be good for like the X-Men to have some influence here. Um which was cool. Yeah, I think that was the only thing. It's like, hey, you know, if you were going from the animated series to this now, it's like, aren't you gonna explain why those those two are kind of leading the the council? <laughs> yeah, in yeah, it was, right? yeah. You're not gonna explain that. They've reformed, maybe. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. But he still looks kind of, uh, you know, evil and diabolical. they're probably bankrolling the whole Genosian uh, endeavor, so they probably which have explains to, like, the ten dollar apples. <laughs> yeah right like it's 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 100 percent that and i was thinking this too because madeline Pryor's on that council uh will she become the black queen at some point mm, oh yeah yeah there you go. right that happens too right could could be a slight costume change on that one as well who knows uh but it's good that was one of my first thoughts too was like oh are they gonna have madeline join them at some point because again that all could happen again that's crazy thread when, when, when they show up and she's there you're like oh yeah i mean like t- as far as she knows she's jean gray like she has all those and she's just gotta like go off live her own life find something yeah. new away from like everything it's like when ben riley knew. shows up he's <laughs> like well i have to dye my hair blonde and start a new life and call myself ben right yeah. like he's like i am not the peter parker and man, clones got it rough man that's why that's why it's so great when matt like yeah goblin queen and ben riley do team up at some point in the comics that was actually just last year i think oh really them clones i'm trying to remember what that was called the clone but saga he, the clones yes <laughs> clone wars yeah, the Clone Wars. <laughs> no, the, the Ben Riley one was cl- called so- Clone Saga, wasn't it? Yeah, the Ben Riley one was yeah. called Clone Saga, but there yeah, was yeah, a, yeah. like, they introduced a new, like, Hallow's Eve, who turned him into Chasm, 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 yeah. right? And then eventually Chasm and, who's Ben Riley, uh, and Goblin Queen, they team up and go after both Spider Man and the X Men, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's got it rough. Yeah. So- <laughs> <laughs> Dark Web. Oh, and it was, and it was bad. Going to, <laughs> okay, good to know. Thank you, Dark Darian. <laughs> right, Mike Taylor, he's got it too. Dark Web. Thank you guys. See, the chat always knows. The chat always knows. All right, so then we get, so it's, now it's the evening. So even before this, I don't have photos of it, which kind of sucks. There's the whole meeting thing between the Hellfire Club and Magneto, and they're just like, "Hey, you're gonna need a date for this thing. You're gonna need a queen." <laughs> right he's like i got someone in mind this is gonna be great and you you gotta remember early on in the episode too like magneto just talks down to gambit like you you're immature so good you you (laughs) suck you got nothing on me like it's just (laughs) no he was like you know i wouldn't complain about the uh the, the jet because if this thing goes down you're the only one who can't fly yeah, yeah, you're the... <laughs> he is he is perfectly playing into that like the new boyfriend role, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. It's it's so good. And so he asks, you know, he he goes, he talks to Rogue. Rogue's like, yeah, all right, right. We're gonna get to hang on. So this is like so before <laughs> so much in this episode. They there's so much so in much in here, right? And we'll get to gambit and rogues talk about it mm-hmm. in, a, in a heartbeat but we go to this because this, they're showing off hellfire gala has started they pan up to the sky we see a silhouette of Ooh, who's that of the watcher when the watcher is in the house um this is your first if you caught it this is your mm-hmm. first clue 
of the amount of bullshit that's about to hit the fan. This absolutely like, right. And this, yeah, this is it. This is your, this is your warning. This is your final warning of the show. Like, or actually, this is not even the final warning of the show. You get one more warning of something. You get a literal warning. <laughs> like, like I said, they kept warning us. Did the chat, right? anyone in the chat not see that? Um, that silhouette in the sky? Yeah. Oh, there I didn't see it the coming. first time around. Right. I didn't see it till you pointed it out. Yeah. Oh, shit. I never noticed the watcher. Well, in case I didn't have the right screenshot, but there's another screen gap where we see Kevin watching the watcher which is <laughs> alex did see that yeah, yeah. The kevin cameo the kevin was yeah. like because like you know uh, it was a, it was a message i think that's the first time alex sent me a message so i'm like he 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 knows that this is my account right <laughs> i'm like okay here there's the joke yeah but yeah i made a video i made a video about seeing that and then uh, alex caught my reflection on my tv so it was uh you know yo dog i heard you like reflections here's a reflection, here's a reflection. <laughs> right here's the here's the talk as well where they're kind of taught the the un delegate oh yeah how about that quote i'm trying the uh gosh what was it it was really really good where it's like you're okay with having a terrorist in charge or as a leader mm -hmm. magneto kind of it's retorts like with are you cool with your leaders doing acts of terrorism being or being terrorists. terrorists yeah yeah and i was like well, snap <laughs> <laughs> She's like, whoa, 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 you're gonna have this guy as as the as your leader, and he he's like, hey, I'm sure the UN will, you know, will uphold our right to choose, uh, uh, you know, a nation to choose its own leader. She's like, but he's a terrorist. You can have a terrorist. I have the quote here. Most other nations don't allow a terrorist to be their leader, and uh, his his zinger was like, but you know, yet so many allow their leaders to be terrorists. He's That's like, damn, it. used her own words against her. Yep. Yeah, like. Dude knows what he's doing. He's Dude. the rebuttal king. <laughs> I, also <laughs> yeah. I know. No, I, you can't. You can't. Meg, you know would have been a great pro wrestler. <laughs> like he yeah, would have been. Always so... got the perfect thing to say. Right. Um, his writers are really good. <laughs> yeah. Kenny Knuckles. Yeah, Magneto is the rebuttal king. Hundred percent. I also right? just want to again point out how great. Um, valerie cooper it like how great katherine disher is as valerie cooper like her line delivery is just always so on point <laughs> it's yeah like every everyone's been awesome and then of yeah. course like right as the festivities are starting this is what i feel is our last warning mm. oh my god cable showing up and being like oh no right like he's, what time is it <laughs> yeah what time is it he knows he got there too late that yeah. is the look of a man in distraught knowing he didn't do his like he's he fucked up right like that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, like oh no i'm too late yeah Day late and a dollar short yep right like he was there specifically to give a warning and he he screwed up He's, also, uh, he's, might have blocking, uh, he's blocking marrow in like a uh, you know hellfire club uh attire right. behind yeah. him she's right there over the shoulder <clears throat> uh and again too this is where madeline's like hey like she, she recognizes those eyes like that's those are the eyes of my son hmm. right and that's when he also is like wait what and then he gets <laughs> yeah he gets the fact that he's being, like pulled away yeah Right. That's like so, uh, that's like that that question. Hey, if you could travel back in time, but only had time to say five words to yourself, what would you say? <laughs> I would say <laughs> what kind of advice? It's like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I was what day is it? coming. <laughs> yeah, what day is it? <laughs> he says, turn the music off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you turn that? Can you turn that thing down? I have something yeah. really important to say. <laughs> Oh, you like, my time. Has... oh no five <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right again great great shot right the mother and son reunited oh man yeah. and that's the original right. voice of gambit doing the voice of cable right here right good shout out on that great uh, cable voice right super good i'm i'm digging that hang on 
you get sucked, both of them. sucked back through uh through time oh that part that effect was really cool too mm, yeah this really here weird. yeah yeah that looks All so the good. effects animation is just so right in the shout show. out to my boy chris graf uh effect soup on this show uh so it couldn't be more like he's got to be on cloud nine during the series because <laughs> if people do talk about the effects a lot in this show yeah it's yeah. not just us i see people a lot being like because even the bamfs the teleporting that looked so good yeah every piece of smoke it's all just so perfect so yeah. perfect this episode yeah. in particular has a ton of really special <laughs> uh, yeah. effects animation and again like this shows like they're they probably had a pretty good budget for it because a lot of the effects artists, they're not TV effects artists. These are theatrical animation and like theatrical animators. They work on. I was going to say this feels like an animated movie. Like it has yes. like a, a, a feature level, uh, you know, artistry to it. Yep. Hussein, one of my boys on spider verse. He's on the show again, killing it like nice. i'm so stoked for these guys like they're mm. like this stuff looks so good this whole show just looks so good <laughs> yeah i think everyone involved can really just you know get, get, get receive their flowers the show like pat on the back it's just it's just through and through really really solid yeah it's beautiful stuff it makes me just it's just nice to see like i, I think i've mentioned this before we get a, we're getting such good animation from disney plus right now and yeah. I just I don't want to ever take that for granted because getting X Men and I mean and Bad Batch at the same time has been nothing but an absolute delight. Yeah, I was spoiled. I, I watched this first and then Bad Batch. I'm like, well, <laughs> how can you how can you follow that? And then I'm like, okay, this this episode was still good. I think on its own it would have been even better. But following you know X Men episode five, it's you know sorry yeah. sorry. Well, I watched. I had to watch Bad Batch when I got up in the morning because when this episode ended, I was like, I just gotta go to bed, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like I just need to lay down and just cry myself to sleep. <laughs> Do we have uh, that cable in a Marvel Legends like a cartoon version, or it's like no, a comic one that's no. really close? No, but we right. know people, so we should demand it. Right. Um, it's we, gotta be coming. <laughs> I get yeah, actually at the when we're done going with this episode, we should talk about who, characters we want to see made in Marvel yeah. Legends because I think that's there's a lot here. Um and then also while this party is just starting, Gambit's getting ready, Rogue shows up at the you know, on his balcony. Of course, Gambit being Gambit's all like, Oh, I get the night call, right? He's he's pretty <laughs> stoked. I get that. And, uh, well, she's going to break the news to him about what's going to happen. And, uh, she totally, uh, we, we get right into the backstory uh, mm -hmm. of her. There's, yeah. And she talks about like, Hey, like I was not, I, you know, you know, I used to be a villain. This is her, uh, taking the power of avalanche and using those powers. Uh, again, this is so this is th this whole scene was just awesome and you can again it's uh lauren that's the name of the voice actress uh lenore zan lenore zan thank you oh, for rogue yeah. Yeah, lenore. yeah uh she killed it in this yeah oh yeah you, yeah she was so because you could hear it in her voice of like i have bad news and i'm going to talk this out with you and this is not good <laughs> and you knew yeah someone's yeah. getting hurt and she was always like it. in the original show like that element of like vulnerability and sadness to her voice uh you know behind the like sassiness like she always she always like nailed it uh even in the original series and then it you know so getting to see these scenes of like of melancholy like it just it's really it, she just really uh, is a phenomenal performance yeah, it's this whole scene was so good. Um, and they kind of just she goes and takes to the backstory of like, hey, this is how it was. Then my mother, she introduced me to Magneto. Right. And, you know, Magneto took me in and started like teaching me. And I think she even shows up in like the full on Savage Land gear. Right. Right. Because that's yeah. where he would have been located. At that yeah, time, right. it would have been 
he would his base would be at the Savage Land. So although I wonder if like if you go back to the episode where like he and Xavier end up in the Savage Land, he I want does he like I don't think he recognizes it. I mean, maybe maybe they don't address it. I I think this is again one of those retcons. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. I think it's. I I, I always feel like this show has done the appropriate retcons. Yeah. Right. There's been a few of them. Uh, I think this is definitely one of them. But I, I. this yeah this to me has just been awesome so they they talk about it and you know kevin got this one lined up ready to go draw me like one of your mutant girls this one too i feel like is going to turn into a meme where they're going to oh yeah for sure change the painting (laughs) when i saw this i was like oh no (laughs) but oh yes someone's gonna put that (laughs) booty shot in this painting a hundred percent how he's spitting too it's just like yeah just make it can make it more (laughs) perverse yeah right like in a way like and again too like this feels spicy like the way she's like taking off the gloves and sure yeah all of that you know the couch right like it's just a blanket there you know yep it's it's happening right but But also just brilliant having magneto painting with multiple brushes magnetically it's like it's just you know still so clever (laughs) still yeah it's awesome it's like this it's i love how she's just kind of talking him through it and she talks about the moment like you know we're we're out and that's when they realize like hey like his magnetic field protects him i can touch somebody yeah right and she kind of says that whole line of like i can feel you but i can't feel you yeah right and this is yeah. where it won't be the first time we hear it in this episode oh my god uh again this is like everything from here it just like it just gets worse <laughs> that's scene, the scene between them is so friggin good um and yeah and, sh- and shout out to uh aj lacasio and lenore zan like just really bringing the emotional weight to the scene and there's also this like it really it feels like a private conversation between two people who have loved each other f- for a while like you know just the way they the familiarity they have with one another um it's just it's really uh you know like there's a line where like rogue says you know because gambit is you know it kind of he's a advising her not to go off with magneto and she's like and she says something like well gambit always knows the odds doesn't he like you know there's there's something about that just feels like you know like Ah. they really like they have a that feels like you're getting a a window into a relationship that exists off screen you know like there's it feels like there's like a life to these characters beyond just what we're seeing you know each episode is really 100%. good. And then he said uh, and then Gambit says something to the effect of like, you know, in these matters like Gambit knows, you know, in matters of the heart, he knows the odds. He's yeah. throwing like cards into the fire, you know, he's holding the queen of hearts yeah. again, holding Dude, it up to the screen. You, Come on. You Come feel on. it. You feel every bit of pain that he's feeling in that. Like it's just it's uh, again, this is just the the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> <laughs> because this yeah. episode. and then of course the hellfire gala happens they make their grand entrance <laughs> together start making Quite out an a little entrance bit of, yeah a little bit of pda at the hellfire gala dance into you a know? song that sounds like uh, ace of bass it was ace of bass really <laughs> i've been told it actually is the, ori- <laughs> the original song right yeah it's i thought Happy Nation. i didn't know okay yeah. Happy Nation, Ace of Base is playing, which again, perfect, right? <laughs> like it's a yeah. Ace of Base is just no, nothing screams more '90s than Ace of Base, <laughs> in a lot of ways, good or bad. Uh, and again, the perfect use of the song and title, right? So now um, it's kind of like the celebrating of Magneto, and this, you know, he's got his queen. And then that's where she's not feeling it. Yeah. Right. And I, him, I also, like, like real quick, I love the attention oh, yeah. during their dance, the attention paid to their hands touch, like just rem- always reminding you that's like, 
yeah, this is about touch. This is about, you know, you know, the simple in a lot of ways, the simplest things that she can't experience with anyone else. Mm -hmm. Right. More yeah, like in your face, Gambit. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. And you, like, I don't even think he wasn't even there, was he? Oh no, he was there because he, he, he wasn't. He, down, he left. Pretty painful. Yeah. Yeah. It's... He he's sitting there at the bar with Madeline. Yeah. Nobody wants to see this. Nobody yeah. wants to see this. I didn't <laughs> want to see it. I wanted to walk out with them, where it was just like, <laughs> "I'm yeah. with you, dude." Like a hundred percent. This is bullshit. So he doesn't get. Yeah, fuck he Magneto. doesn't see this part where she's just like, "I don't like." Again, she goes, "I don't feel." I don't feel you. Mm. Right? Because yeah, he can. You know, he can do things Gambit can't. Uh, but again, that's where her her heart's with Gant with you know yeah. with Gumbo. Oh my God. <laughs> I right? just realized something for the end of the episode. Oh. I'm, I'm just sad as shit ever. Oh no! Okay, all right, no. all right. No. So we'll, we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get there. there. <laughs> I don't want to talk uh, about it. Yeah, this is where, and then this is where all hell breaks loose. Uh, mm -hmm. It took. It took no time uh, to get there. You've got it. I see Kev's got it lined the, up. The world's uh, biggest sentinel ever. <laughs> e for extinction. Here we go. Right? Like it's. But even more is... so, I feel like. I mean, I guess, yeah, they had the big, like, you know, master mold. But like this, this just seems like the biggest God tier sentinel ever yeah. seen. Yeah. <laughs> this is the has lab we need. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. Like, like was there a, <laughs> there was a tri sentinel head right for the house? It was a tri sentinel head. Yeah, it's they this thing is bigger than a skyscraper. It cannot right. be yeah. a has. <laughs> I mean, no. like regular sized sentinels are just like flying off this thing like uh, sweat bees, like tie fighters. Know? Yeah, like, <laughs> like they're they're the unloading like tie fighters, like going <laughs> yeah. through the city. Like it's like this is legit scary, <laughs> or like because all the stuff that's like the, the explosion happens in the background. And then that's when it's just like, Oh my God, this is happening. And it's such that an entire nation of super powered mutants. You're like, yeah, they're screwed. <laughs> like nothing can defeat this, this thing. Yeah. They show yeah. a, a lineup of bodies that already tried to, you know, take it head on. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Like it's, this thing is big. Like it's just, it's, it is made for it's created for genocide like a hundred percent like and it's it is uh it's just it's going through genosha it's devastating genosha um at one point now are do we think some of these characters are actually uh dead uh, uh because like it looked like banshee and marrow freaking oh, bit it yeah, yeah. for sure they always kill Banshee. <laughs> they oh, it's true. You they they always kill Banshee, <laughs> right? Like it's they're taking down the statues. Everything, everything's everything's gone to hell. Yeah, that was a that was a, a emotional moment. Magneto just get getting launched into a sta statue of Xavier, getting knocked over onto people like yeah, pe like crushing. the mutants like buying into the dream, being crushed by the statue of Xavier. It's like. It's so brutal. And, yeah, and Magneto's like, you know, expression looking at like this crumbled statue, the death of the dream. And yeah, this, you know, it's the like this imagery. here, like this to me was insane because this is everything we've also been seeing in the news lately. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like you, you turn into the news in the last couple of years. This is Gaza. This is Ukraine. These are the kind of images we've been seeing a lot. Uh, and it's been freaking brutal. So again, seeing this, you know, all kind of again brought into the show. The show does not pull any punches when it comes to using imagery and real life events and incorporating yeah. them into the show. Yeah. Uh, so again, it just it goes for you, right? And Magneto starts having his own flashbacks. Yeah, this part was crazy. Right. Oh, I didn't right? even see. I didn't even see the. Uh... Yeah the the stars there on the background i just remember, like i just saw the flash because there were quick cuts right there were really quick yeah, cuts yeah. between like you know modern day stuff and his own memory so i didn't even see the uh 
the detail on the those but it's like it's characters. it's like perfectly it's, paced because it's like you're in his mind it's like as he's feeling these the these moments as he's as he's realizing it's all happening again like you just you're yeah you feel like you're in magneto's headspace at that moment yeah it's yeah. it you you start to yeah again he just goes to, you feel that pain and you you get mad <laughs> They don't, right? they like, don't sugarcoat yeah. it either, right? The original one, obviously, like Saturday morning cartoons, they, you know, the 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 backstory for Magneto is just a little bit more generic, I guess. But here, it's like they straight up. Well, I have... think they, by the time you get to the '90s, they're trying they're trying to sort of dial in Magneto's age. I think at that point, mm. but I mean, maybe it still lines up. But um, but yeah, it's certainly like it's a you. We all know what the what the uh, reference course. is, you know. Yeah, right. but here, like, they have the the stars on on the the clothes, like, yeah, re- it's, right. You know, barely covered by any of that barbed wire, so they're not they're not holding back on what his backstory is here, and obviously how powerful that is to what he's experiencing in the moment. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, yeah, it's a crazy episode. It's bonkers, and I don't get any screen caps of this either. But at one point. You know the we we see the you know the the sentinel charge up taking a shot at magneto and once again he gets saved by another mutant and this time it's nightcrawler mm-hmm. uh who mm. teleports everybody kind of out of the way like just in time and it really affects like nightcrawler gets like taken out uh yeah you think he's dead i thought do. he was gone was the first thing. i was like oh no Oh, but I, lo- I was. I love the first paramedic on the scene was Rogue. She's like, "Let me," and then she, they show her hand. She goes, "Oh, right." Yeah, they Tal never case. like, like this show. Anything. They never miss a chance to like twist the knife and just be like, you know, yeah. But then Gambit's like right there, like it's right there, it's good stuff. Yeah, he checks and he's like, "No, he's still alive." Yeah, and he does come back again later. Again, we don't know the out. Again, they they put it in such an air like they did such a great job of us not knowing. Like, who did we lose? Who we didn't lose? Yeah. But even like so, after even Magneto has, like his flashbacks and stuff. Hang out. I just want to see what Kevin brought up here. Right. Yes. This is yeah. it. This is the POV shot <laughs> of Rogue. Like I can't do nothing. Uh, yeah, but like again, too, anchoring you in the character's perspective there. I mean, this put in this case, literal perspective, but like yeah. putting right. you in their headspace. So good. It's like that, that shot alone, too, because like, again, Nightcrawler being like on my Mount Rushmore of mutants. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. Like, oh, God. Oh, God, please. No. Uh, but this is awesome, too. When <laughs> beat Maggie up with yeah. He starts using the the train as a whip, and he just keeps biffing the the sentinel in the mouth. This is some real creative Magneto power stuff, mm-hmm. and beautifully right. animated. All those like you know shots, scenes of the train like moving through perspective, like the speed of it. <laughs> yeah, or even just like this part here, because you think, oh, they're gonna shoot it out, but no, he he cracks it right in the mouth. And it doesn't get to fire off. Like it's just, mm. it's so so good, um, because now everybody's on, like they're kind of all kind of like now everyone's in rescue mode. As well, yeah. like I think this is this is Leech, correct? So I think even before mm. this, uh, let me see if I got screen grabs. Uh, someone even mentions, "Hey, we got the Morlocks are trapped." Yeah, yeah, that's right. Those right. poor Morlocks can't catch a break. <laughs> can't catch a break, you know. And you know that's when we see the Morlocks. They're waiting. Leech says, "I'm not scared." Magneto said, "We don't have to be afraid anymore." Mm. Uh, and then, of course, that's when Gambit comes in, surfing the head of a Sentinel. It was so cool. Yeah, this is Dude, like what a rescue, the- yeah. man. <laughs> really good. And I, I like that we. That- yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna. I, I like to think that this is like making up for the for like Magneto and Gambit not covering themselves in glory during the mutant massacre in the comics. <laughs> like now, yeah. in, in this version, they get to actually save the Morlocks instead of like 
utterly failing them or you know attempting to save them rather you're right and i just and i, I even like how when he leaves like when he walks away from that head he does the flicks the card and it blows mm. up half the sentinel's head you see yeah. the inside of it and i'm like oh okay yeah. this is this is so cool and he's just like, I'm Luke Skywalker. So I'm here cool to in this you. episode like yeah. yeah yeah he's so cool like this is the part where someone would hand him a cerveza right <laughs> a martini there just happened to be yeah. one martini on the counter that wasn't crushed yeah and he just it. takes a sip from it or something yeah but man animation <laughs> on this part where he jumps up spins the staff and takes it out all of so all of his good. fights this episode man the animation is is just uh is just unreal and there was one one moment yeah. i feel like was before this it's like rogue and gambit like uh going into action to like save yeah. people and, and gambit's on the motorcycle and rogue's flying beside him and there's it's it's quick but there's there's a moment where like because it's like yeah no the two like the x-men like whatever their drama whatever the emotional thing like x-men are just gonna go into action and save the day and there's this moment in the sh and it's like a action shot of gambit's on the motorcycle rogues flying beside him running into battle and their hands line up like in the frame and it's almost like they're touching and it's like yeah this is like this is when you talk about like feeling th them feeling each other this is the moment where they are like they're both aligned as x-men as you know people who will sacrifice themselves to save others like this is like the like tr you know the, what really matters like you know, getting to like the their the heart of these characters and how that they're perfect for each other. Yeah, it's again like this is like combos, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> like team up combos. This is what it was, and like you're get again. They did the I think they did the Akira slide on the bike. Oh, uh, cool. Mm. With Gambit, so of course I'm glad they did it. No one should yeah, ever I'll shy away from us. doing it. <laughs> uh. I yeah and again too just they did some creative stuff with him too because it was like once he was out of cards uh the scarf, he used the <laughs> scarf right like it's like that's so cool yeah, the creativity yeah. with their powers uh for the series like they they level it up so much yeah. they do yeah everything's a weapon uh for gambit <laughs> yeah it would which is so cool to see them do that like it's it's been awesome right this too, right? This is when they kind of do mm. the Omega mutant detected. And they kind of yeah. just pile on Magneto at this point. And they're kind of piling on everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's on, not looking good. It's, it's like this thing is like, yeah. Right. This is a, I think this is the, right? Because they're, they go from there kind of to this, like this, the, mm. it is charging up again. Here's one of those shots. Here's boom, boom. I think uh, the the gentleman on the far left. I think that's Bo, who's the director of the yeah. series. And this is someone else from the series as well, who I'm not sure if it was who that. I'm not sure who it is, but I know it's it is another Easter egg of someone working on the show. Yeah, there's and definitely course, yeah, there's definitely a shot. There's another shot where it's, you can clearly see it's it's Bo DeMeo and um, one of the directors, one of the uh, uh, yeah, director of the oh, show okay i believe it's this one right yeah yeah there it is and uh this is like and again we don't know like they they cut it off at such a point where we don't know if they're okay or not oh if these yeah. two yeah yeah these two well even with nightcrawler and boom boom like we just don't know we don't know like did yeah. they get fried in this blast as well like we are we are not sure uh, at, the, at this point like has anyone called the x-men in westchester or are they only hearing about it in the aftermath on the news or are they all busy doing interviews that they didn't check their communicators well, you know what i mean there's a well so gene gray gets like a psychic you know disturbance yeah. gets the nosebleed and that coincides, or you know, and then later on in the episode, Madeline Pryor has it just before right. the attack. So I don't know if that's if those actually are, happen at the same time, and it's um, just the episode shows us in a different order. Um, right. But right. Yeah, I forgot it's about curious. The, the nosebleed. 
Yeah. But yeah and also, like, real quick, uh, Jennifer Hale, like when she's when she's, you know, after she's just found Cyclops, you know, has been using his psychic rapport with Madeline, her perf her vocal performance is really uh, excellent. Like, again, just so realistic uh, of just you just feel Jean's like pain and betrayal and confusion, you know. It's it is. Yeah. And I think Chris is bringing this up too. no, there's live TV coverage. So they are seeing seeing it during. Mm -hmm. right because there is a shot i think i do have a shot of the i don't think i have a shot of them watching it on tv but there's the aftermath shot after um yeah. but it's bonkers and then of course uh while everything's kind of like the big fight happens gambit goes after the master mold just by himself and this is where we get well, the name I mean, of the title before oh. this though there's oh. i mean there, there's sort of that like great moment where because like the the sent you know magneto is shielding the morlocks against this sentinel that this the giant sentinel um and he's using like a metal girder to keep rogue and gambit a safe right distance away. and rogue is like you know she's all just so distraught because magneto is sacrificing himself and there's this great i mean it's like so good like it's so amazing you know, magneto is creating this dome of metal around rogue and gambit but he leaves one space so he can make eye keep eye contact with rogue so he can keep so right. he can you know look at her sort of one last time uh and, and have that connection before he uh says uh you know he's he sort of reassures leech um in uh, is it german or it's Yiddish? in german uh, yeah um reassures him uh uh before seemingly he's killed and the he's morlocks not, right? as well like because it's well, said this, yeah the sentinel did yeah, say just, omega, yeah, omega level. level eliminated and eliminate that's pretty clear what that means and obviously <laughs> that then inspires rogue she goes like you know she's going to destroy she's going she's just berserker. So, Distraught, yeah, she's gonna, yeah. you know, just fly into the sentinel, like <laughs> and it's and Gambit trying to do, like, you know, when Gambit's gotta do what he's gotta do as well, right? He's gonna well, go, he sees like, that she's like probably, you know, I mean, the this it's the sentinel's like charging up, right? Like, Rogue is not gonna withstand the blast that the, she's like kind of just like, you know, sacrificing herself out of rage to like, you know try to maybe avenge magneto but it's like you know she's not going to withstand that blast from the, right from it yeah i had my friend a uh, friend of mine had a theory today what if leech whose powers is known to be you know Ooh. sapping someone's power oh oh that's a right i, I bet that's what it is <laughs> yeah that's and a then good for uh, a, for really really quickly turns it off magneto and you know it's just a a dumb robot is like oh it's gone we did it yeah what if that's because sound, that you know. i mean if you don't see a body you know like you know it's that's until you that see is like the rules. A, a body yeah. like it's uh, yeah yeah the, and i don't know if, i don't think they'd kill all the morlocks like that too i, I don't know they might we'll uh see be. here's my see they i have might, a thing that, grotesque. i also don't think magneto is dead so even if he had his powers taken away for a moment, I got a feeling he's going to get knocked out or something. Because I think this is how they're going to bring in Zorn. Oh. Hmm. Right? Which is also possible. Because that was yeah. also Magneto. Yeah. Right? So it's... Yeah, that was... So many possibilities, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe they'll bring in Joseph, his clone. Yeah, More yeah, clones. I'm thinking Joseph. <laughs> like, right? oh, Magneto has amnesia <laughs> from the Genosha event. Yeah, yeah. Bring more clones. More bring clones? More... <laughs> Come on, guys. Hey, anything um... <laughs> to bring in more Joe Mad era stuff. Anything. <laughs> right? I'm okay with that. The, But again, yeah, Gambit's doing his... He's going after the, the Sentinel. Um, he, and this... he, he sends the motorcycle into rogue uh to keep yes. her from you know getting getting blasted and then he it's yeah it's just between it's 
you know, because they have the Sentinels going to wipe out the rest of the like, you know, Nightcrawler and the innocent, the bystanders who are injured. And so it's up to Gambit. Like he's the only thing mm-hmm. left to, sa- to be able to save these people. Like, and sorry, save sorry them he does. <laughs> like this is bonkers. Yeah. Like absolutely. He gets, well, he gets caught, right? He gets, yeah. He gets snatched by this little, you know, toothpick that the sentinels seem to have, I guess. And it just like comes out of its like neck. Neck. It's just like this thing is so uh, seemingly yeah. unbeatable. Like, <laughs> right. And they stopped Gambit in the air, and then it just kind of like pulled back, and you saw that beam like coming in out of his body. You're like, I don't know. What, what was your what was your reaction at that time, guys? It's I- maybe the most epic hero sacri- self-sacrifice death I've seen in any comic or cartoon or media like it is the most glorious final gambit moment <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah you could have yeah it charges it, up the whole thing it's th- like first off out of all the characters that were going to like take a hit um I would not have guessed no gambit at all yeah not even close um kenny knuckles is saying too he saw a tweet from demeo uh that this is just a warm-up and i think i sent it to you guys because he posted it on his instagram as well of like yeah that message was amazing like uh uh, you know every everyone should uh read it as a follow-up to this episode 100 percent. he i think after all what's happened, because we still don't know. We, we just know he was let go from the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest is kind of really none of our business. So that's that. But it was kind of nice to see him kind of get, because he hasn't spoken about the show at all since it came out. Yeah. Uh, so it was great to see kind of like that message he put out there today. Because uh, it was like a little bit of like consoling for some of us. Uh where he's kind of like, but also at the same time, it was also a warning of like, yeah, well, it, <laughs> it, it, I mean, his, his, his vision for the show is like spectacular. And it, and, and this episode is like, sort of the, like you said, it's like the culmination of like his initial pitch. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, it's just like, it's this, this show is a, you know, just a, a masterpiece. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and yeah, the, in the knowing, uh, you know, thinking a, about it in terms of the, the sort the real world inspiration and, you know, how this fits into a more meaningful picture for all of us who grew up in the nineties watching the show and, you know, the realities that we've faced since like, you know, I, I think that that's why this these episodes have been like so resonant, especially this one. Like, yeah, this one for sure. This, but I love this where he's just like, of course, we see it all turn sparkly, glowy pink, and he's charging this whole thing up with kind of his last ounce of strength, or yeah, maybe that's yeah. just what happens because it's inside of him. I don't know. Yeah, it's uh, the power. It's like his soul is just like the like, power, hey, the raw power of it. <laughs> Like if this is how I go, this is you're you're going with me, right? Like this is one of those moments. And the final uh, line, which the, when you realize why this episode is titled, oh my god, remember it. <laughs> it's, it is, yeah, I I agree, right? Like and the what's going to happen with Rogue from here on, because that thing does explode. She's not only has witnessed now Magneto getting taken out, she's now witnessed Gambit, the two men uh, she's loved the most in her life are are now gone in one in one night in one event. Right. Uh, this is where I think for any if we've got any kids that have been watching the show with their parents, this is probably going to be their first hit of uh, cartoon trauma. <laughs> right. <laughs> this, yeah. You need therapy. This is this tonight is my therapy from this episode. Yeah, talking right. it out with everyone. <laughs> yeah, and hundred percent right. I didn't get to do that at five years old during Five Will Goes West, or you know, 
the, those wow, five will five goes west. <laughs> Not five will goes west. What was the one before that? American Tale. American Tale, right? Yeah. That's a sad movie, man. <laughs> the <laughs> and uh, but yeah, this this one here, I think, yeah, like this. If this did not mess you up in some sort of fashion, uh, go get checked. Make sure you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Look Check at this pulse. face. Real quick, look at like the drawings are so good on this show. Like it's just the the it's just perfect. Like every like emotion like reads so well. Like yeah, it's just like powerful. That that like, was the thing that I that I just it dawned on me like half an hour ago. Remember, I was like, oh, we'll save it for later. But like I, I was so caught up in in Gambit's thing that I'm like, oh shoot, she also lost Magneto too. So she yeah. went from like two to zero. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like in, in, welcome to the X Men. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, it's just, you know, being a Toronto sports fan or something, you know, you're in the lead. <laughs> and then it's just, what just happened? What the heck? Uh, yeah. So that's why I'm just like, so not only is she dealing with, you know, what, sorry, what the viewers are dealing with, with, you know, her, her final line, but like, oh, shoot, you know, her, how's it going to be you know afterwards for her it's it's just unreal what that character is going through right like this is yeah this is rough man this is yeah again pretty, this is uh... a, these episodes are pull no punches and it's just again kudos to the voice actress she killed it yeah uh, yeah it's just yeah it's just in in cutting to black and just hearing just the voice. It's like they knew. They knew what they had. It's like so powerful. They're they, sick. They're like, we're gonna get them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like this is the last shot before things go black. Yeah. Right. Like it's. It is. Ugh. Touching, and and that's what's that is the twist yeah. of the night. That's what's so brilliant exactly. about the show. Yeah. That her the, the, being able to touch Gambit is how you know he's dead. Right, because we. Then you know, she's also like, "I can't feel you." Yeah, yeah, that was already it. Like, like the realization the first time she's actually getting to touch him, and he's dead. And then I'm already sitting there in shock. It goes yeah. black, and then I think I think the line is the second twist, the the second stab. It's like the realization first, and then it goes, "Oh my god!" And then you hear her say it, and the pain in her voice. Yeah. Uh, I, I, was, I was staring in disbelief. It's like. Yeah, like same here. Like it was, uh, oh God, <laughs> it's so, <laughs> so like so so rough. Like it's just it's set, like the whole like once we get to that like once the evening starts, it's like everything kind of goes emotionally just downhill. Like you're just you 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 feel the the breakup between Rogue and Gambit, and then it's mm -hmm. just. Uh, it just gets worse, but it, like, That's why I'm kind of hoping for like a cable episode next, like something just like set, you know, set in the future, or it's like just a different, you know, we're kind of like let this just you know settle, take a, a little bit of a, of a, yeah, a little bit of a break from uh, from the uh, nightmare that is the X Men's lives right now, <laughs> like yeah, <laughs> right, right, like even like Chris is saying on episode five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And on episode five, I know 10. what's the yeah. finale gonna be like. It's a three part finale, like this felt like a season finale of like any other show, yeah, like, man, right? Like 100%. Right? Next up is Storms Part Two again. Mm -hmm. I think I got a feeling that one's because if that's part two, uh, I will guarantee you, spoiler alert. Actually, no, I'm not even gonna bring it up because it's from the comics. <laughs> yeah. I'm not even gonna bring it up. I want people yeah, to try and go no in fresh spoilers. Right, I don't want to. I don't. Well, I could be completely wrong at the same yeah. time, but I also don't want to risk it. Has it, like has anyone really guessed what's what's going to happen or what has been happening in like the last few episodes? Like, it, it no, I don't think anyone would have expected yeah. this, right? So just, yeah. just watch it and enjoy it, dude. Like it's hard. <laughs> it's gonna be hard, so hard to say like, yeah, I knew it. Like you could yeah. just say, I call any story in the comics or. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. Right? Well, that was the whole, like, uh, it's funny. Like, we, you know, as fans, we speculate that's part of the fun. And like I was saying earlier, too, we, 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 we've we been giving five paths we could go down. Yeah. That's going to lead to absolute shit. They chose this path to shit. 
But even though they chose this path for E for Extinction, I would have never guessed that this was going to be our ending to this episode. Yeah. Like, because it's it affects you, like, you know, because even if you know from the comics, it still hits you. It's it's almost just like, it's like we have like an, a, an emotional reaction when, you know, we sort of realize something just before we see it, you know? And so I think there's the, mo- if you are familiar with the comics, like the most you'll get is just like, like with, with Storm getting depowered, you're like, oh, it's this. Oh, I know it's, it's, so they're doing this from the comics. Like this is what, you know, it's like, it's, you just, you maybe get it a, a half second sooner than anyone else watching it cold, you know, but like, it is its own thing. It's not like you right. really know what to expect. Uh, Michael Taylor brings this up. Wanda also said, I can't feel you to visions remains uh, in the MCU. Yeah. As well. Right. Like it's, they're going for it. All they're right. going. Uh, one. Uh, do you see a face on the curtain next to Ryan? And two. <laughs> oh, <that's... laughs> yeah. There's a nose. Got like a There's nose. A eyeball there. there. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And two, well, it's, someone's it's maybe some shit's about to go down. It's the oh watcher. My God. The watcher. <laughs> the, watcher so is, right now. the watcher is watching the episode. So just heads up. <laughs> he's what he's he's watching our reactions. There's gonna be a what if Alice got spoiled on this episode and stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but two, like, is this the end? Is this a, a timeline that we just witnessed? And it, is something gonna happen? What do you guys think with with a little bit of uh, the split second cable appearance in this episode. I didn't even think about that. If they cable would fix it. I think even so hang on, like even well, Derek Hoover. Clearly... Yeah. Why, why have him show up for five, three to five seconds? Yeah. And he's no, it's, it's, it's it's give, giving you like a little bit of an out, but then at the same time, like obviously like we hope for that because we want to see, yeah. more gambit and you know we want mm-hmm. a, ha- a happy ending for rogue you know like but at the same time it's like it's such a it was such like an impactful sacrifice and moment and mm-hmm. final send-off and then thinking about like uh Bo DeMeo's you know what he posted about how you know part of this show is learning that things don't always work out you know night all nice and neat the way they do in a Saturday morning cartoon and true you know th- this is like an evolve you know the this is the x-men story evolving you know and um yeah i mean i could i think it's like anyone's guess like i, I you know I'm, I'm sure we'll see more cable and possibly like trying trying to you know prevent this tragedy right. but like i don't know if you know maybe things will still end up the way they have i, I don't know yeah michael yeah. taylor's saying i think cable's been trying to fix this since season one mm. right well, he's always trying to fix something, right? It's like whether it's like <laughs> a legacy virus or apocalypse, yeah. like you know, his work's never done. I love it's it, a- like Cable and Bishop just keep going back to the future and being like, "Is it? Do we do it? Like, oh, it's still fucked up. Like, oh, look me back in the time machine." Right? Is the other one sitting back having a beer while they're like, "All right, it's your turn. You go back." <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank like, you. Tag the, me the, in. The. Uh, <laughs> The what would it be? The cable verse? Yeah. Or like yeah. Loki Loki uh in season two when he ran back and did oh, you know kept right. trying to learn learn uh how to build the I don't remember what that machine was called over like a million times or something like that, right? Right. It's, he just did it. I love it. But this is them watching it on TV as it's happening. So the sun's coming up. Yeah, yeah right. get on the plane. Get on, yeah. The, yeah. I mean, Beast's away. reaction, like, see, he's like sitting there and is like, again, it's like that is also like so core oh. to this, this, what this episode is about, where like it begins with the X Men like bringing a news team into their homes, like, we're gonna sh- show the world who the X Men are, and like, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna tell the world like who we are, and that, you know, there's nothing to fear from us, you know, things are looking up for you know mutant human relations and then by the end of the episode it's like not only do the x-men not even really know who they are some of them don't even know who they are like their identities like but then you know to think that the world was ready 
for this like it's mm-hmm. just that that's the rug pull and that's you know and that's something that i think we can all relate to of thinking that the world has progressed more than it has <sighs> that beast pose man that yep. was me yeah that was me <laughs> yeah that's yeah <laughs> they they are us at this this moment right like it's it is jer jer i'm gonna say jer uh the next time uh they send bishop back to the future they should really ask him to check in on their immediate future (laughs) that's like right like it's uh, oh and christopher negus also sunspot needs to use his powers soon we we got a glimpse of it yeah he's got the arm you know he's got his arm going right like it's uh kenny's also saying here too on a fun note (laughs) <laughs> now it's not the time kenny uh <laughs> did you notice uh that beast dressed up for the interview because that is his comic girlfriend yes yeah uh, he broke 100%. out the cravat you know he's he's trying to imp- he's dressed to impress they were flirting he we we knew we knew what was going on we knew yeah. what was going on i hope we get to actually get more of trish tilby in the in in future episodes or even in the they got a lot to tell i think yeah, this I- season but I hope they they come back to that later on. I hope they go into space together, like in the Joe Maggiera uh, oh. <laughs> comics. <laughs> yes, because isn't that where that's the trial of Gambit? Um, yeah, that eventually leads to the trial of Gambit. Um, also, there's also this suits. like detail in the in the comics that's that was really kind of interesting where trish tilby breaks the new she does a news report about the legacy virus and beast is like you know how how could you you know how could because she she knows about it through him because he's studying it and he's like how could you violate our trust like that now the world is going to fear mutants mm-hmm. all over again thinking they can get you know this, this vi- you know, vi- type of virus from them yeah like that's you know Legacy 19. That's what they'll call it. I don't <laughs> recall. I don't recall the last show where at the end of the episode, you know, usually you finish the episode, you're like, this is the longest time before the new episode. And you're just you're just waiting until the next <laughs> week. I don't remember yeah. the last series yeah. that I felt this way. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to think of that too now. I'm trying to episodes where you just left shook and you're just not sure what to think and is life even fair? I mean, <laughs> like the beginning, someone mentioned this is the X Men's red wedding, and I'm like, maybe you know, Game of Thrones, the early Game, Game of, of Thrones, Thrones, where it was like that. You're like, what, 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 I, what do I do for, for like seven days? Yeah, I right. need the time to like decompress. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, well, we get a week, and then we're right back into it. Yeah. But I think we're again, we're gonna get more of that storm stuff, which I can't wait for because there was. We need to get that wrapped up too. It's at it least some crazy. more of the white overalls, if nothing else. If anything else, right? <laughs> like it's mm-hmm. like let, I just hope Forge's shorts just keep getting shorter <laughs> <laughs> as the series goes on, right? Even Brian Brink, master of the charts, right? He's definitely thinking Game of Thrones. Mm, yeah, you know, like it's I don't know. This has been such a such a great. Like like you said, we're only five episodes in, and I feel like we've gotten a full season because so much has happened. Yeah, God. I mean, what a great halfway point, right? Because it's like that's always you know a, you know a, sh- a, a show or a story. Just it, it it you know its strength is on whether or not it can introduce something halfway through that's going to propel you to the second half of the story or the show, like movie whatever like you know and, and this i think has done a great job of throwing in this like well you thought you knew kind of where it was going but like here's this <laughs> like yep yeah let's see what happens now <laughs> no it's cool but let's let's talk about toys for one hot second <laughs> because we've gotten two waves i think dwight even accidentally hinted at some point on a fan first that there's more waves coming <laughs> yeah well, seeing all these all the cameos in this episode i was like i was like man i want to go back to like that toy bit that you know ni- mid 90s toy biz where they were just making everyone like every character that shows up got a figure you know or didn't even show yeah. up <laughs> yeah right like quark <laughs> right kylan from uh excalibur 
Yeah. Like he's a legendary peg warmer and I think he needs a Marvel legend. He's (laughs) no Kai Lun cameo in this episode. Uh, One day a mutant. He's not a mutant, right? He's He's a mutant. He's like a little boy who gets sent to like Kai Lun. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. But he's like, he was like a boy who got sent to an alternate reality and became like a, I'm pretty sure his mutant power is replicating sounds. Like to, to each their own. So he's yeah. It, Kevin, I don't know how to like explain this, but yeah, it's like he's he he doesn't he's humanoid. So he's like again, he's another like furry dude who's got really good fighting skills. Uses mm-hmm. sword, right? All that stuff. But his mutant power is replicating sounds that he heard. So if he heard like. <laughs> He's like the guy from Police Academy. He's the yeah, guy from Police Academy. That's a hundred percent it, <laughs> right? Like that's a hundred percent it. Like it blows my mind. But yeah, I was like, but you're right. Like this series has done a lot. I think Kevin, you mentioned earlier, like where's Cable? Like we need Cable like this. Uh, I can't imagine they're or... done with just the two waves. Yeah, hmm. same here. Same However, here. I did I did mention to a friend of ours that I'm like I think X Men '97 Marvel Legends. It's like. It might be toy line, like the best toy line this year, like based purely on the fact, well, not purely, sorry. I think it gives it a boost that the show is on at the same time that you can have these toys in your hand. You can watch a show and go, man, I, I wish I had a toy list. Oh, what? They have it already? Mm-hmm. I can go get it. Like there's there are quality figures, obviously. I'm, I'm playing with four, five of them right now in front of me. But the fact <laughs> that there's two waves of, <coughs> excuse me, two waves available ready to go like um, yeah you, know, you can go down to the store you can buy the team except for like what like again you would need to make a new jubilee mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i would get uh <clears throat> older jubilee from the mojo yeah, yeah. oh that's that, did you a, talk about that last week we talked or, about that last week we had yeah. steph stefania on last week she was awesome right uh, that's right yeah and uh like that jubilee i would i would love like older jubilee change interchange with the helmet yeah, no helmet. It's such a cool look at the rollerblades. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah so they got to do that. A skinnier um, morph. Skinnier morph. Yeah, morph. We need. I'm um, just trying to think of and sunspot, of course. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We, you know, give us put them in that jacket and everything. Like, just give well, it to us. They do. It's about two new bodies per wave. Because it's like the first the first wave, the new one was uh, executioner, and then it was right. new heads on reused bodies, and then in wave two, Jean Grey is new, and I guess the Goblin Queen is pretty much all new. Oh, oh, executioner is wave two. Oh, okay. Is it? Oh, did yeah, they- yeah, was, yeah. So wave one was Storm, Rogue, Gambit, Bishop, who was new, uh, new, Jean? new tooling. No, Red Jean Red Magneto. And, like, yeah, the, in the classic Magneto. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, no. Wave two was Jean. Jeez. I can't keep up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have all of we them. Have them. We have them available now. Like, that's why. Like, it's. I think that's super cool. Agreed. Yeah. yeah if they're going to do one that's new body wave per one. wave, then give me either the. Wave one. That, would, that yeah. is wave one. That's Correct. Wave yes. One. Bishop Magneto. Correct. Yep. Right, I'm just trying to think like new body wise, like it's just well, you would just I guess make Jubilee one of the new bodies for a wave, but you can always keep that one for later, like the older Jubilee. And then I, I think yeah, I would I think want it would, yeah. Sunspot I would want first because they could always reuse the morph body from the VHS yeah. line. Yeah. And then just they, give they us they a probably new head. Would. Yeah. Or they could but yeah, the Sunspot use... would be would need all new tooling. Yeah. Sunspot might need and then uh or even with they could use the new, like the Cyclops, Spider-Man buck on Morph. Yeah. They would just need to put the jacket on him. Yeah, the VHS one, he was a little too beefy, I think. Right. Maybe a beast with a proper animated series head, like oh, not just beast. a guy. Yeah, no, beast, they're going right? to, they got to do beast. Yeah. They should just do a deluxe beast and give him a suit. Give him an ass. Yeah, give him this yeah. suit. Yeah, so that's give what him. I want. That's what I want for Marvel Legends. I want Beast in the suit. <laughs> I want Storm in the overalls. 
I want Gambit in the crop top. Like, you know, let's get the like, basketball like, alternate looks. looks. I, that, basketball looks. Basketball. Yep. That's San, that's <laughs> SDCC exclusive. Yes. No, it's not a San Diego exclusive. It's an a, it's an Amazon exclusive. They do the five. Packs. <laughs> yeah. Give us, give us those. It comes with the dented like basketball hoop. Yeah. Yep. And a charged up basketball. Glob Herman. It's about time we get Glob Herman in Legends. Right. That's that'd actually be, true too. Even really just cool a, to a comic version of that. Yeah. Right. But, uh, probably 97 wave like Carson Tava. I agree, Johnny. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> 100%. Right. Uh, you know, there's, a, again, this series is like given us so, so much. Like even if they did a HasLab out of this series, like mm -hmm. I know I've mentioned like HasLab like a thousand times, but it's just like, Blackbird, uh, it's the time. The time is X Men. Uh, you know, uh, is give back me the on kitchen. Top. I want. The, I <laughs> want the, the kitchen. Yes, uh, as a you know, and then that's where you can have the crop top gambit as a stretch goal. Now thinking about beignets is going to be so sad. Thinking <laughs> about crop tops is now sad. Yeah, <laughs> I'll never wear these again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I. But like. It has been like, but you're right. Like having these figures out the same time as the show, I wish other brands would take note. Not going to name names. Well, uh, you guys will have to uh, stay tuned. Right. Oh no, we're not looking at you. <laughs> Mondo's doing great. Mondo. <laughs> I'm not worried about Mondo. I'm actually was because they brought up Carson Tava. I was like, it's star Wars that needs to catch the hell up. <laughs> right. And do that stuff. It's uh you know, the fact we have no Bad Batch figures out at the same time as the show is like gross. Yeah. I, I Although have, I wonder uh, if there may be a delay in Marvel Legends now because it's like, you know, first two waves make sense. But then, you know, you don't know if the show is going to connect. I guess they would make it no matter what. Like, but, right. you know, but there may have been because like the first two, the first wave came out earlier because the show was delayed right like initially right. like the show was supposed to air when that first wave came out and then they had a second wave ready to go they, i'm sure they've got a third one on the way yeah yeah i'm certain of it it's like it is super cool but yeah get forge in short shorts 100 yeah. percent. emma frost uh, i mean i love yeah. the way emma frost looks uh looked in this episode like that would be i mean i know i know we've gotten some good emma frosts but you know you can always take another that uh, that Hellfire box that they did for San Diego Comic Con, yeah, uh, yeah. great is, box. Man. It is one of the best things I've ever bought, uh, because it comes with every like just the extra like the figures themselves are all gorgeous. Yeah, right. Yeah, they are. Yeah, every one of them in that box set. But then having that invitation letter yep. on the inside, the box, just the the packaging, everything. It was just. It felt decadent. It's like... yeah, it, was, it was black on black embossed gates on the outside, right? Yep. It had and the cigar had slip invitation. cover. Yeah, it had a seal on the on the invitation letter. There's the portrait yeah. of the four the of them. Portrait. Yep. It was that uh, and that the one. mojo, the mojo yeah, right. box set where it's like a TV and then like yeah. the TV remote guide. is another box. And there's a TV guide. Yeah. Like that was just uh, brilliant. What's the other one? Modoc World Tour. The World Tour. They had in, inside, there's like a set list of songs. That one's you know a little out there, but you could see like the details and and effort and effort put they, into that packaging. I yeah. wonder if they'll have an X Men '97 Comic Con exclusive this year, oh, like that, that because it is because that's like the main media right now for Marvel. For Marvel, it would make sense. I think I get so nervous about San Diego Comic Con exclusives. Like I'm always like, there's that relief of like, oh, I don't need that. But like when that <laughs> time comes up, it's just like, oh no, like what is it going to be? Like I'm, I'm honestly super scared. It's going to be the basketball set, and it's going to be me like sweating to try to get it <laughs> off Hasbro Pulse or like calling every friend I know that's going. Like please get this for me. I'll get mm. you. I'll like, get you a QR code. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sweet. Thank you. <laughs> right. Like it'd be one of those things where it's like I will go out. I will make a baby. I will give you that baby if that's what it takes. Like just, like, <laughs> I will go. 
I mean, you make uh, the baby, baby seems table. like. Well, I mean, I just supply the filament. The woman 3D prints it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ryan will send. Will have a baby and send it to the future if he needs a to. Yeah, prince. I will send it to the future and have it come back when and you can get the, the the exclusive on discount and then send it back. Right. It's just <laughs> right. Like uh, Alex, I got a question. You don't have to answer this if you can't answer this. But at this point, are you guys already like? getting san diego like planning it and getting it together yeah okay that's uh, it that's yeah. the question that's <laughs> well, the i mean there we go yeah, yeah I, was always, I, mean, I mean it's already april so i guess that makes sense yeah. you gotta get to my prepared. knowledge it has there's you know an awareness of it certainly there's a <laughs> <way. laughs> it's been acknowledged san diego comic con yeah. has been acknowledged <laughs> at yeah. work people right? there seems to be a familiarity with the term san diego comic con yeah <laughs> right so it's just i don't know i'm excited for comic-con this year i wonder if they're going to have a because i know they've i i don't know for sure but i feel like it's already been hinted that they've already been working on the next season Did you uh, right there, Kevin? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes yeah i mean they're like halfway or they probably more than halfway through season two and then season yeah. three has been greenlit right so I wonder too if we're gonna get a first look at season two. Whoa. Mm. At San Diego. So if you're Kevin, if you're going again, and Alex, if you're going again, you guys have to try to find a way to make it to the Marvel animation panel. Uh, that might even end up being a Hall H thing. Mm. Yeah, depending on like considering how big the show is right now. Yeah. Right. Surprise. And it's D23 in August. So they might change they might wait Save and show things at d23 as well yeah that's genius i love d i love the idea of d23 same here it actually like when i think of d23 and i think of star wars celebration it's always kind of surprised me that reed pop and disney um haven't done a marvel convention yep. for sure because i feel like between the animation the movies the tv shows uh and then the whole comic side of it and the toy side of it, they could easily fill out a convention center. Yeah. Right. No doubt. An artist alley, an art show. You know how like Star Wars Celebration has like an art show where you can go and buy exclusive limited prints. Uh, mm. You know, and that is something I feel like Marvel could do easily. Mm. Where you get these. That makes more sense since it's like comics and right. you know, well, like, just the idea of having artist alley and like a writer's block and you know again you have like tv panels show pa like movie panels animation panels you could have the there's so much you could do that whole uncanny experience thing you know yeah mm, something I, yeah. similar to that yeah 100 percent. like i think that is something that it's always shocked me that marvel has never never even tried to do that and i couldn't like could you imagine how big it would be if that's what they led up to with with infinity war where they held marvel celebration you saw the first trailer for infinity war Oof. and mm. you had chris evans there you had everybody right like and again too you could just bring back everyone from like like imagine if they did like they kept doing these these conventions and of course they're like oh by the way we've got Toby Maguire here and Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland. Like it would just yeah. be like, oh, and just says for a sneak peek, here's Sh Shamik Moore from who does the voice of Miles Morales. Right. You could have Haley Steinfeld there who does both Spider Gwen and Kate Bishop. Like if there's there's so much, man. I gotta <laughs> Evan, you run conventions. How hard would this be? How hard would this be? <laughs> <laughs> give me the money just give me yeah, the money give me the done. money if we got if we got someone here who has a uh, millions of dollars laying around looking to yeah. spend let's at let's least start this. has right. uh for today's episode has anyone brought up to you uh because you guys are, are are more well versed in the comics than than me but brought up cassandra nova oh we we did bring up i think way hmm. early on the possibility yeah. like it all would depend on this episode if right. e for extinction happened yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Because I'm, cause I'm like, the, yeah, in the comics, she instigates the Sentinel attack on Genosha. Right. Um, but we see the whole build up to that. In the yeah, I, I feel like it's like, well, I mean, I don't know, I mean, never with this show, like never say never. But I, I feel like because in the we didn't talk about this, I don't think. But in the last episode, they, they teased Bastion because on Forge's wall of photos, mm -hmm. uh, there's like like kind of tucked underneath another photo. You can just you don't you can't see his head, but like you can kind of see Bastion with his arm around Forge um, from his days with the defense department um so you know and i, I feel and you know tolerance is extinction is the title of the like three-part finale so i feel like we might see some operation zero tolerance, tolerance. uh right yeah. which if i mean that's a cool uh there, there's some concepts from operation zero tolerance that would be like right in line with the direction the show's going yeah right because um that that watcher silhouette you know and i'm not saying all bald heads are the same but she kind of has like that a high pointy collar like she sometimes has like a high collared shirt and the head doesn't look as bulbous <laughs> as, a, as a watcher would be but then you know so does, does she is she able to cast a projection so yeah it's, that's it's, an interesting that red theory. hair right because know. you have the sentinels mixed in there <laughs> the wild the master mold and you know um, so I, I went to look it up after someone mentioned that to me and they're like, oh, she found a master mold sentinel in South America. I'm like, well, weren't we in South America earlier in the season with, with Trask and then, uh, yeah. you know, uh, storms, Omega level threat moment. So I'm like, yeah, I just, um, that was a cool one that someone brought up today. She's got to show up at some point like that. It's too cool. An idea and character not to, uh, not to have. Mm hmm. Yeah, I had one theory that still hasn't come true yet this season. Uh, no Deadpool appearance. Mm. I was even as like a background character, even as a background character, just not safe, just there. Not safe something for uh, for season two. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. But I was just like, or even like a morph moment. You know what I mean? Like where he's mm, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, around. we're only halfway through, so maybe it's true. We're only halfway um, through. But I was expecting <laughs> it just because of the the movie coming out this year. Maybe that's why they're avoiding it. Maybe they're doing that too. Saving yeah. Deadpool for that. I mean, it would be great if they could get Ryan Reynolds to voice him <laughs> oh, <laughs> when, they, when they finally do. Uh... <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> it would just that be would... like a really inappropriate moment for morph to, to turn into deadpool you know like he has consistently <laughs> yeah you know, like bad timing and then they, yeah it would be like ryan reynolds voice and wolverine would be like knock it off morph i hate that guy yeah <laughs> something, something as quick as that yeah yeah, yeah. that would be, be cool. awesome <laughs> all right hey we are at two and a half hours we usually do an hour show we went way over but we <laughs> yeah. knew this was gonna I yeah. knew this was going to happen today with the, the Joker 2 trailer dropping, plus this episode being so heavy. Mm. Uh, with Jam-packed. It was jam-packed. Jam and I, I am forever now grateful that this series exists. This is, I wish more even just live action shows had this much depth and character yeah. and emotional beats. Uh, and twists and turns. Right? And again, I have a feeling the show exists because the the people at Disney were just kind of like, ah, it's a cartoon, do what you want. And I got a feeling this is one of those cases because it, it feels like a labor of love. I'm going to say that. Yeah, every it, was, it was made by people who love X-Men, who get X-Men, who know the comics, who know the characters inside and out and were allowed to express that. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, Kevin, we're going to go with some quick final thoughts before I do the plugs and close the show. Uh, but I do have your channel toying around. I have it linked in the description below as well. Cool. Thank uh, you. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, what's going on tomorrow? Tomorrow, I think I'm going to take a take a week off. So bad person to start with because it's just no. been so crazy. So <laughs> yeah, crazy to uh, the well, then I appreciate you making the time for us this week. Oh, dude. Yeah, I'd skip my show to talk about X-Men anytime. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah just follow me on uh youtube toying around thank you thanks for having me yeah that's uh, you dude love having you on uh alex we've got 
usually I, I do do the quick mondo plugs and everything but the link also is down in the description below there's a yeah. teal on sale yeah, rogues are yeah, almost teal. sold out it's, yeah it's bonkers um, let yeah and I, and I'll, I'll plug a, a non uh, mondo thing which is uh so my brother directed a movie that comes out tomorrow uh it's in theaters it's called arcadian it stars nicholas cage and it's a horror Ooh. movie and um they're the monsters in the movie uh my brother and i designed together and i actually sculpted them so like uh oh, obviously there's nice like, you know, man. effects and stuff done they're fully animated but like i did the like 3d model that <laughs> that they're uh based on so That's yeah awesome. if you uh if you like if you want to see like some pretty freaky uh creatures and you like nicholas cage and you like suspense and horror check it out it's called are Arcadia. you in the credits yeah yeah yep so if you see alex newborn in the credits right i want every brewer i said newborn i think that's New another that's know, another writer like, huh? that's another writer yeah alex alex like brewer, if you see up. him in the uh in the credits take a photo tag him on fan plastic four on instagram yeah or even tag Gotham City tonight as well. I will share it. <laughs> right? But you got to make sure that you you find it, take a photo of it, go check it out. Arcadia. So, you know, Arcadian. It's this, Arcadian yeah. showing yeah. up this congrats, weekend. Man. Right? Yeah, congrats. <laughs> That's a huge deal getting the credit. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I, I love the movie. I'm so proud of my brother. Like he just, he, he did such a great job. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's, yeah. It, Go out and see it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then tomorrow, I guess, because there's no toying around, I guess we'll do our toy anxiety that we were supposed to do yesterday that Craig delayed. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so we're going to do toy anxiety tomorrow. Uh, you know, I think Craig just wants to talk about possible. the He want, he just wants Joker 2 toys. Uh, I can't blame him. I'm actually kind of surprised <laughs> Todd hasn't done them yet, seeing the other weird shit he makes. So... <laughs> And also, I'm going to Calgary Fan Expo, and Todd McFarlane's going to be there. Oh, so I'm going to try and get. Yourself? Yeah, I am going to ask him myself. I'm going to try and get him on my on this show. I want to try and get him on toying around and toy anxiety. I want to try and see if I can get get Todd on some of some of our oh, yeah. shows because we all have questions. Yeah. <laughs> like what the fuck? I think that's one of them. <laughs> What's up with the feet? Yeah. On your. <laughs> Yeah, like, <laughs> can you let us know what's happening, please? Uh, so I'd love to get Todd on as well. But that's not till the end of the month. We'll figure that out later. Uh, but that's it. So thank you, everyone, for hanging out today. Uh, Alex is, oh, and Alice, who has a comic as well, the link for that is in the description below as well. So please go check out and support her as well, please. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone that uh, tuned in and hung out because this was a long show do i i do not need an exhibitor badge thank you johnny i am i i paid for this a long time ago in the early bird days so thank you everyone for being here see you next week with more x-men talk and uh have a good night <laughs>